You just heard from Officer Brandon Stalker's mother describing her son, the 24-year-old killed just over one week ago, protecting the city he loved. Thank you for joining WTOL 11 special coverage as we honor Officer Brandon Stalker gunned down in the line of duty last Monday evening. Been watching some of our coverage this morning as we got ready for the uh, procession to begin here, Melissa. And I'll tell you what, you know, we, we look back on what was a tragic day, but that really turns today into what has become, unfortunately, over the last six months, uh, another celebration of life. And you hear some of the words from family members and from friends and neighbors, uh, even uh, members of uh, neighborhoods where uh, Brandon Stalker grew up remembering this young man who was so committed to the community. And today we look back and uh, celebrate what he was, what he had become and what he had passion about here in the Toledo region. And Jeff, I've really been thinking over the last several days about the calling that police officers and firefighters have to protect and to serve and really lay down their lives for total strangers. And it got me thinking, who would you lay your life down for? Maybe your children, your spouse, maybe your parents. Or would you lay your life down for a perfect stranger? Uh, that's what these police officers are doing for us every single day when they sign up for this job. And really this all started here with a simple property damage investigation. It ended in the momentous tragedy that brought us to this very moment. Yeah, in fact, we want to take a look as we get to this moment. Some of our footage out on the scene this morning as we start to line up. Uh, we have seen a number of cars already lined up. What you are looking at right there, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just kind of set the stage. What you're seeing on your screen right there, that is Douglas Road. Uh, northbound traffic uh, up at the top and uh, southbound obviously lined up. We told you how Toledo police and uh, the city of Toledo were going to start uh, making sure that they had everything ready to roll as we start to get ready, get a little bit closer to this celebration of life outside of UT Savage Arena. And we're going to look back at this investigation into what brought us here. It all started with an arson at Rosary Cathedral just over a week ago that ended with Officer Stalker and the suspect both killed. It was early Monday when Toledo woke to the news someone vandalized Holy Rosary Cathedral. The suspect, 27-year-old Christopher Harris. That shock would later turn to sadness when police tracked him down. During an armed standoff, Harris shot and killed 24-year-old officer Brandon Stalker. Police returned fire, killing Harris. I lost my only son, but my son did his job, and that's what he loved doing. This is a very uh, dark uh, and horrific day for the city of Toledo. Um, and it comes at a time when the Toledo Police Department uh, has had to endure uh, too many uh, dark and terrible days in the last six months. It was just six months ago that Officer Anthony Dia was also killed in the line of duty. I know exactly how they're feeling, and I just want them to know as hard as it is, you know, be proud of them. You know, he's a hero. Not everybody or anybody can walk in them shoes. It was during those tense hours Monday afternoon that the Harris family says it pleaded with police to let them reason with their son. I appreciate her wanting to help her son, and I get it. I'm a parent myself, but there is no way on God's green earth that I'm going to let someone into a barricaded house where we know the suspect has a weapon and he has made homicidal threats on Facebook. I just cannot put her in that, that predicament and I, I would not let that happen. Bringing questions to bear about mental health in our community and how we address it. And that was a clear sign of how bad mental illness is in the inner city community, in the black community especially. We as a people need to do something and look out for each other and see signs help out as much as we can. If there is someone with a documented mental illness, someone who's been through the system, I, I, I want our officers to know that. I don't want HIPAA regulations standing in the way. Stalker, a Whitmer grad, an athlete, a father, a coach, and a beloved member of the community. The way that I knew him, incredibly caring um, and service oriented. I mean, you look at his job, he was so proud to be um, you know, involved, to be a Toledo policeman, so proud of that. And um, 
and then a service back to here, back to the school that, that you know, he came from and that he, that he loved. And, um, you know, that's just the person he was. Another dark day in our city's history, but maybe, as some have said this week, it'll act as a call to action. You know, we've talked about it over the last week, Melissa, not the way 2021 anybody wanted it to start. It has drawn attention to a number of things. One, that being the commitment to the community for the uh, uh, officers around Toledo. Also, the focus that has been put on mental health as we go forward. It's really a time of support for the Toledo Police Department, and we've talked to mental health experts who say that just the outpouring of support from various police departments across the state and from people who are lining up just to pay respects on this snowy, cold Northwest Ohio morning will really begin to help the family and the police department in this healing process. I want to get out live right now to Ariel Onstadt, who is outside the University of Toledo Savage Hall, where the funeral is set to begin in just moments. And Ariel, you are waiting for the funeral procession to appear this morning. Melissa, yes, we are waiting for the hearse to arrive in a few minutes. Actually, I was just speaking with an officer down there by Savage Arena. We're also beginning to see this incredible display of loyalty and support from other surrounding police departments. I want you to see this long line of police cars. Within the past hour, we went from maybe five cars uh, up at the top of North Douglas Road here to now hundreds of police cars stretching down the road. They're from every department uh, south in Ohio, north of Ohio. We have Rossford, Perrysburg, Dayton. I saw a Cleveland police officer as well and more departments beginning to steadily make their way in by the hour. We'll continue to keep you updated as we see more of this show of solidarity and support for Officer Brandon Stalker as his family and our community prepares to say goodbye. Ariel, thank you so much. Well, the show of support for Officer Stalker has been nothing short of amazing. You see that there this morning, but it's also with the way the community has really responded and wrapped their arms around this family. Tiffany Tarpley talks about how you can donate and make sure that money gets to the Stalker family. In times of tragedy, our community comes together. And as we mourn the loss of Officer Brandon Stalker, there is no shortage of support from people right here in Northwest Ohio. Tonight I'm running for officer Brandon Stalker. Here at the Toledo Police Department in Ohio. From runs in his name. There's a lot of trouble out right now and people need a lot of help right now. To a hot cocoa stand in West Toledo, Officer Brandon Stalker's death is touching hearts and inspiring people in our community to help in any way they can. I can't express enough sympathy, enough condolences. Um, you know, young, young kids um, and, and fiance, and his mother, who, who I've, I've known for years. If his story touches your heart, the Toledo Police Federal Credit Union is collecting donations. You can drop off or mail a check in his name, and all of that money will go to Officer Stalker's family. At the end of the day, we're a community, and we're trying to grow the community and make sure that you know the next day is better than the last. Both Ohio Going Blue and Lateral Gig have a special selection in honor of the fallen Toledo police officer. Both are giving 100% of the money to his family. You can also donate to a GoFundMe set up for the family. The same person who created a fundraiser for Officer Anthony Dia made this one. You can find links to all of these donation options with more information right now on WTOL.com. Tiffany Tarpley, WTOL 11. You know, I've seen it said a number of times this week, Melissa, everybody talking about how Toledo, Northwest Ohio, Southeastern Michigan always rise to the occasion and have done so once again. Absolutely, Jeff, and we mark another dark day in Toledo's history as our community remembers Officer Brandon Stalker. Today, we also honor firefighters Jamie Dickman and Stephen Machinsky, who were killed seven years ago today.
Yes, hello. Hello, hello, can you hear me? No. No. It's been a very busy morning outside of UT Savage Hall as family, friends and fellow first responders start to fill the arena. Savage Arena rather, I said Savage Hall. Uh, we're getting started at 10 o'clock here for this remembrance of Brandon Stalker killed just over a week ago in the line of duty. Our Kaylee Kirby live outside where we have seen this steady stream of folks making their way in already. Yeah, Jeff, I am uh, kind of right across the street from where all of the police officers and uh, first responders line up and they kind of walk down this walkway to head into Savage Arena. I am seeing officers and uh, firefighters from all over. We've got Dayton police. We've got Bowling Green. I've seen a couple Lorraine police officers. Uh, many of them kind of grim looks on their face. They know that today is, you know, not a day where they want to gather and, and put another uh, brother in blue, sister in blue, um, put another one of them to rest. So it's definitely um, kind of a sad kind of uh, walk as they make their way down here. But Many of them have have smiled and said, hey, thanks for doing this to me. And uh, they're very appreciative of, you know, everyone coming to gather and coming to be able to come together and uh, put someone to rest after such a tragedy. Jeff. All right, Kaylee, thanks so much. And those pictures just remarkably similar to just six months ago when we laid Officer Dia to rest. I guess, of course, the weather has changed. Uh, let's take a look right now. Uh, we do have brand new video just in of the family of Officer Stalker who is making their way into Savage Arena. His fiance Ashley, you see the baby there, that is Officer Stalker's three month old son, Grayson. He also has a daughter there who you can see, and that is seven year old Kenna. His father is David. His mother is Cassette Stalker, and she's said of her son, it's been very hard. He was my only boy. He was my best friend. Uh, he loved everyone. He always had a smile on his face and would do anything for anybody. And you can see uh, Ariel mentioned the word loyalty. And that is what we are seeing right now as these police officers from around the state and the Toledo Police Department firefighters uh, line up and pay their respects not only to Officer Stalker, but also comforting his family today. And, and we will see this police department wrap their arms around this family for years to come. And unfortunately, today marks another somber day for Toledo. Two firefighters died battling an apartment fire in North Toledo seven years ago today. Steve Machinsky and Jamie Dickman died inside that building on Magnolia Street. Investigators later determined the owner intentionally set it on fire and a judge sentenced that man, Ray Abu Arab, to 20 years in prison. So a lot of hearts uh, going out to the Toledo Fire Department as well today. You might have the feeling we've been here before. Tragedy struck the Toledo Police Department, as I mentioned, a little more than six months ago when a man gunned down Officer Anthony Dia on July 4th, 2020. Dia and Officer Brandon Stalker were actually in the same police class, becoming officers at the same time. Tim Miller looks at some of the community support which shined bright once before when saying goodbye to Officer Dia. 
murals painted, flowers laid, t-shirts worn, and donations given to support fallen officer Anthony Dia. Not even a week after he was tragically killed on July 4th, people began raising money for his young family. The Furniture Palace became a spot for food truck fundraisers like this one you see here. And t-shirt shop Juke Mode jumped up to help with this Toledo is Family shirt with all proceeds going to the Dia family. Dia's family also stepped out to give back in his name. His wife Jamie and his young sons Eunice and Matham packed up boxes of meals to go. Whatever uh, we do in their name benefits them in the afterlife, so we just Whatever good we can do in Anthony's name, uh, for example, donating food in Anthony's name. And the greatest gift that one can give to the deceased from their family is to do a good deed on their behalf. The community support continued to pop up throughout Lucas County at ice cream shops and even cookouts. Anthony's dad, Tony, also found ways to support others in his son's name, like making sure this retired Toledo officer had a new roof and a clean yard to come home to. So I contacted the chief, D, and together they found the money. Finding a way, despite the odds, our community has pulled together. The Ohio Safety Officers College Memorial Fund also gave Dia's two sons eligibility for free in-state college. Jeff and Mel, back to you. Tim, thank you so much. As the community honors Officer Stalker, one of the men who was closest to him mourns the loss of a partner, a friend, and a father. He couldn't have been more proud to be the father that he was. And you could tell it in his smile and in his voice every time those kids were brought up. The emotional tribute to Toledo's fallen police officer next. Eric and Carla here, we can hear you. Real bad? Like, what do you mean real bad? Okay. This is Eric. Uh, mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check. Yes.
Just an unbelievable show of support right now outside UT Savage Arena this morning as once again we are celebrating the life of Officer Brandon Stalker killed in the line of duty a week ago yesterday. Uh, we just showed you just a few minutes ago, Melissa, we were seeing the family start to make their way into the arena and we talked earlier this week, Melissa, with a member of the Fraternal Order of Police here in Ohio and we asked him about the reverence and the respect that we will witness here today. With all police in, uh, involved funerals, um, it's somber. Uh, from the moment you get in to an arena, uh, you will feel the heaviness and the weight of the officers. You'll see a lot of emotion uh, worn on the officer's sleeves. You'll see a lot of hugging and crying and holding each other. Um, the beauty of it, um, the ceremonial, pageantry of it, though, will remain consistent. Uh, it is to pay respect and tribute uh, to the officer who gave his everything for the community. And so those things will stay the same. I am a little um, unsure about how tomorrow's will look and that this is the first one that I will have attended under uh, COVID. So I'm not sure exactly how that will play into it. But regardless, I'm sure that the presentation uh, and the ceremonial aspects will be just as memorable as the previous ones. And you can see right here live pictures of the funeral procession. The hearse carrying Officer Brandon Stalker is, is just to the left of your screen right now. Um, if we can pan over, we're all sharing a camera here uh, in the Toledo media, but there you go. Uh, he has just arrived and uh, he will be taken into Savage Arena right now. He will pass through this uh, flow of police officers into the arena where his family just walked in moments ago. Yeah, Melissa, the other thing, too, is just the honor guard that is standing there lining the sidewalk, the entryway into Savage Arena, uh, representing all parts of Ohio, Girard, Ohio, Westlake, Ohio. Sylvania is out there front and center as well as they uh, carry on this tradition, this somber tradition. But as you heard from uh, the FOP, they were saying each and every time there is a respect, there is a dignity, there is a duty that is carried out. And they, they realize this and they, they honor that tradition. That's right, because the traditions at police funeral really represent honor, service, and gratitude. Uh, the duty of the people who, it's a high honor for them uh, to stand vigil during this uh, funeral and to remain with Officer Stalker. Those assigned to the honor guard, uh, casket watch, pallbearers, color guard, up to 18 people. They all have experience and training uh, for standing guard, carrying the flags, folding the flag that is draping the casket and performing other duties there today. And Brandon Stalker was a lot of things to a lot of people, a father, a son, and a man engaged to be married. His partner, Toledo police officer, Mitch Vanderhorst, opens up to Jerry Anderson about the man he knew so closely. It's, it's definitely a rough go. Um, we, you know, we all stick together and we take it day by day. Um, that's all you really can do in something like this. It's tough, but it's times like these when we just have to remember why we do it. And, you know, we gather and we find strength in each other. And again, you know, we just take it day by day. Is it you guys as youngsters from the same class leaning on each other, or is it the 20, 25 year veteran bring it down, coming down and putting his arm around you, or is it all of that? It's, it's, it's everything. Um, our academy class, we're a tight knit group. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've been through quite a bit so far, so we really lean on each other. But it's, you know, it's also the guys that have been on a while and, you know, they, you know, they've been through it in the past, unfortunately, too. So they they know what it is to go through it. Um, so they're there for us as well. But in the end, we're all coming together. Right. Everybody in the department, um, guys that have been on a while, guys that are out of our class, guys that are out of the class even after us. So wow. everybody really comes together and there's no separation. Everybody's just one big family when something like this happens. The officer Vanderhorst you see here, he's the son of a police officer. In fact, dad's still working, isn't he out there in Sylvania Township or something? Yep, like yep. And, and it's your belief that that same desire controlled Brandon Stalker. In other words, that his work just kind of energized him, didn't it? Absolutely. There, there is very few people 
that will come to this job and be as excited to go out and work. Um, it wasn't just a job for Brandon. He loved doing it. He was excited to come to work. Um, having him as a partner, I fed off that energy. I was excited to come into work. Um, we went out and we did what we had to do. We answered our calls like we needed to, but we had fun doing it because it's something that we both loved. And just having him next to me, feeding off that energy, it was it was incredible. It was something that I'll probably never have again. You talked about you guys being partners for most of 2020. Actually, COVID had all of you guys patrolling solo for a time, yep. right, to be separated yep. from each other. When that was lifted, Officer Stalker and you were partners then for the remainder of the year through New Year's. But then even a standard, very standard reassignment for 2021, you guys were still working the same shift. You still saw yep. each other every day. In fact, you saw him just a few days before we lost him? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we were still hanging out, um, you know, more than just being partners at work. I mean, he was one of my absolute best friends outside of work. Um, so, you know, we'd go home, we'd take off the uniform, and then we'd come hang out again because he was just that kind of guy. Um, he recently, I know I was telling you earlier, we just recently moved and he came over and he was, he was helping me move. I didn't even have to ask him. He, he told me he was going to come over and move because that's just the kind of guy he was. Um, friends were everything. Um, and he just he wanted to be with his friends. And it was incredible to have somebody like Brandon there for you. Folks, nobody likes moving. We do it for friends if they ask us. This guy, you, you tell me, didn't even have to be asked. It was I, just, I, I, it didn't, was I didn't even ask him. him. Wow. Yep. He, he just he called me. And he asked me if I was still moving. I said, yeah, we are. And he, he told me, he's like, okay. He said, I'm in my truck and I'm on my way. He said, I'll be there in about 25 minutes. When and I see us lose officers in, in, in now two in a matter of months, yes, we've lost police officers. It hurts the department, hurts the community. You know what I think of? And it's the dad, it's now the granddad in me, Mitch. I think of the kids who've lost a dad forever. You and I talk. Our dads, for each of us, were uh, were and are massive influences in our lives. Officer Stalker, he wore that dad hat proudly, and you say daily. Oh, there wasn't a single shift that went by that he wasn't bragging about Kenna or Grayson. Um, I mean, we we talked about him constantly. You know, I I talk about my daughter, and you know, he'd talk about Kenna and Grayson, and the smile that lit up his face was a smile that you're never going to find on another person. Once again, our Jerry Anderson there talking with Brandon Stalker's partner and Melissa, the emotion starting to uh, kind of, uh, I guess, catch up to a number of people who have already made their way in. And of course, the pallbearers there with their reverence and uh, stepping away with tears uh, and the emotion just kind of catching up with them as well. And also the honor guard that I just talked about taking their place um, both at the front and uh, the back of the casket here. Again, this is a great duty for these officers to be able to, to do this at a police funeral. Uh, the governor's also ordered all flags at half staff throughout the state until uh, sundown today. Um, when we talk about some of what you're going to see today, um, I think one of the most emotional parts of a, of a police or firefighter funeral, don't you, Jeff, is um, what you will hear is the dispatcher during one point in the service will put out a call to the fallen officer as they normally would out on uh, the street. You will hear a beat of silence. The dispatcher will put out a second call. There will be a pause, and then the dispatcher will announce that this officer has not responded, and it is the end of Officer Brandon Stalker's watch. And folks, uh, and there's Tony uh, Anthony Diaz's father there, paying his uh, respects at, at the casket uh, there in Savage Arena as more and more people start to make their way in, getting their seats, uh, exchanging uh, their sympathy there with friends, family. Uh, Chief Crawl tweeting out uh, earlier this mm -hmm. morning talking about today and the emotion that is tied into it and saying goodbye to yet another officer. And, I, you know, I, I was struck, Melissa, as we had uh, some of the video feed coming in. There are so many representatives from so many different departments who have, they don't know Brandon Stalker, didn't know Brandon Stalker. And once again, this is 
This is part of their respect and the dignity uh, that they want to show here today, the support for the men and women in blue. Yeah, and I think that speaks to the loyalty. You spotted a badge from Girard, Ohio. I had to look that up. That's near Pennsylvania. Uh, so I think that speaks to the loyalty and the support. And earlier this week, uh, Chief Crawl said, when we see the amount of support from not just Toledo Winds, but Michigan across the country, he's been getting phone calls and letters. And it really means a lot to the officers, he said, to know that while what happened was tragic, they still have the majority of people's support. He said the entire Toledo police family is in shock. We have another hero who's paid the ultimate sacrifice protecting the residents of Toledo and their hearts are heavy. His life, the 32nd, lost in the line of duty and Melissa, we also wanted to take a moment to look back at those who have made the ultimate sacrifice here today. Uh, we pause to reflect on those who did so. For as long as Toledo policemen have been patrolling our streets and wearing the uniform and badge, they have too often been targets. In the course of doing their jobs, they have found themselves in harm's way. The names and faces of those who've gone to work but never came home are honored every year at the police memorial in the Civic Center. Since 1908, nearly 31 men have fallen in the line of duty, many leaving behind families, as did George Centara, gunned down on Upton Avenue. His funeral on that rainy day in 1928 brought a city to halt, to mourn and honor his memory. As did Officer Eddie Keim, a popular prize fighter on the department one month in 1932, shot to death, ending his lifelong dream to become a cop. A sniper targeted two officers killed on Walnut Street in 1922. Harold Happy McDowell and Harold Mossbrugger responded with no idea it would be their final call. Officer Mossbrugger was to be engaged to be married in two weeks, widowed before the wedding. In every case of these sacrifices, there is a story. Because these heroes were more than just a badge and gun, they were people doing their job as was the case of patrolman Petey McGuire in 1921. Suspects at Indiana and Division shot and killed him just a block from his childhood home. His parents heard the gunshot that took his life. And then the case of Detective William Martin. His wife wanted him to retire. He kept saying he'd step down in a few days, but that time never came. On September 6, 1922, he took a bullet to the heart from a bandit in a garage on Fulton Street. His fellow officers took him to his grave. Not all died of violence. Some officers were killed in accidents or even friendly fire. No matter how, it still hurts. The city still weeps. And so it was in 1961 when Walter Boyle died while chasing a suspect in East Toledo or Donald Brown in 1962, and two other officers tried to disarm a man threatening his family with a shotgun. Three officers were hit, one lost an eye, Donald Brown lost his life. In 1970, a suspect ambushed Officer William Miscannon while he sat in a patrol wagon on Door Street. A grieving family spent a lifetime trying to get justice. Then, the shooting death of Detective Keith Dressel in February of 2007. A teenage suspect shot and killed Dressel when he and another detective interrupted a drug deal on Ontario Street. July 4, 2020, in the early morning hours, not long after midnight, Officer Anthony Dia responded to a call to check the safety of a drunk man reportedly bothering people in the Home Depot parking lot on West Alexis. As Officer Dia approached the man, the man on whom he was called to check, he was shot one time. The bullet pierced a small opening in Dia's body armor, killing him. That suspect later took his own life. And most recently, Officer Brandon Stalker shot and killed while working and securing the perimeter of a police standoff. The city weeps and will for these souls who put on a badge, go to work, and sometimes never came home. It really gets you too to see uh, the past funerals. The most recent officer, Anthony Dia, um, Detective Dressel was killed. I remember just as I arrived in Toledo, 
uh, to start working here. And I remember that. I mean, it had been since 1970 since mm -hmm. a police officer was killed, William Niskanen, before Detective Dressel. And I mean, the pictures are just so similar um, from these funerals and nonetheless tragic. And, and it also puts these families in kind of a fraternity now that mm -hmm. they don't want to be a member of, but there is so much support so much care and love between all of them because even we, re I, re I remember Monday night being out in front of Mercy Saint v Mercy Health St. V's. Uh, heartbreaking, wasn't and it? After Heavy. Report absolutely, but after reporting that, Keith Dressel's mother reaching mm -hmm. out to me on social media saying, just thank you for saying his name. Thank you for remembering. Yeah. Obviously, it, it reopens these wounds. You know, we, we talk about these uh, commitments to the community and, and how important. And I wanted to read something real quick. Uh, Superintendent of Washington Local Schools, Brandon, uh, obviously a, a graduate of Whitmer High School. But, you know, going back even further, he went to Monac Elementary and we asked, how, how are they dealing, how's that family dealing with things there? And uh, Katie told us, and she's so gracious to send us a message, she said many of the staff know him since he went there not that long ago. We are all lucky to have officers who visit the buildings on their beat so our kids get to know them. She said, Brandon was a member of our criminal justice program and came back and talked so proudly of his work at TPD. She said he leaves a gigantic hole in all of our hearts as his fiance and mom work here and his daughter attends here. So once again, Katie Anstead, the superintendent of Washington Local Schools. And from Washington Local Schools family to the Toledo Police Department family, we just saw the police chief George Crawl embracing Officer Stalker's family. And of course, uh, there he is. Uh, with his fiance Ashley, the mother of his three-year-old, uh, three-month-old son, and I think that I read from the the chief somewhere that um, you know we talk about the support of the police family, but this is really going to extend. They want to make sure that the children have access to college, that the family can pay off their home. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're seeing donations come in with a GoFundMe and the credit union fund, but this is really a community effort to make sure. Uh, that this family will go forward now without their uh, soon-to-be husband and father and continue to prosper. A tragedy, a tragedy bringing us to today, but a celebration of life. We want to check in with our, we've got team coverage for you here uh, this morning as we celebrate the life of Officer Brandon Stalker and our very own Ariel Onstadt. She is outside of Savage Arena. Ariel, talk a little bit about the emotion that you've seen as they make their way in. Jeff, well, I think there wasn't a dry eye as the hearse uh, pulled up in front of Savage Arena and Officer Brandon Stalker's coffin was pulled outside of that hearse. People began to gather around as it made its way up to the front of the entrance. And you can see now that officers that lined the path just moments ago for that casket are now making their way inside of Savage Hall. And, you know, I was actually speaking with uh, Danielle Dressel, Detective Keith Dressel's wife and she was telling me, you know, this hits differently because even though she didn't know Brandon and then a few months earlier, she didn't know Anthony Dia. She says there's this shared loyalty, which we've been speaking about all morning in which she knows that neither of these officers would have hesitated for a second to step in and help her husband and her husband, who is currently her new husband on the force. She wants to share her love for the Toledo Police Department and we're beginning to see that as people make their way inside of Savage Arena. We're seeing Toledo firefighters as well showing their signs of solidarity and support even on a day that's tragic for them as they mourn the loss of their own as well. So it really is just a coming together of our community is facing this tragedy, but we are brought together by this shared sense of grief and especially for the Toledo police class that, you know, both Anthony Dia and Brandon Stalker were a part of. There are so many cruel ironies that these two young fathers, both 24 years old, lost their lives just about six months apart and both had two young children. Anthony Dia lost his life while patrolling in Unit 118, his squad car. 
And now Brandon Stalker lost his life on January 18th, 118. So there are some shared uh, cruel ironies, as I like to call them. And as fellow officers describe the day, they tell me there's so many eerie similarities between both of this. I keep hearing over and over from those walking in who knew we'd be here again so soon, who knew we'd be here on this day doing this exact thing. But the support of the community really means the world. Just having people come up and offer gestures of love and support, be it the food that's gone to the safety building all week, people stopping by to drop off notes for officers while they're out on patrol. I'm told all of these things really mean the world. So Jeff, Melissa, it's something that I love to see as part of this community. And I think that as we work to heal from this, that community support means all that much. Ariel, great uh, recap of, yes. of the sentiment that's going on. I noticed too inside, I hear very uplifting country music, I think, and um, I think it helps to soften the mood in there. Although, and, and you deal with Toledo Police a lot, uh, working on the morning show, um, this is a really heavy, heavy uh, time for them. Very heavy, Melissa, you know, and seeing them come in just from the morning, some officers, especially I know of, are coming in today for this ceremony. They started their day at 0700, but they'll finish the ceremony today and go work an afternoon shift. If you can believe it, you know, there is no time off and uh, this job is 24 seven, so they don't always get breaks for grief, but it's something that I think they're all processing in their own way, you know, as a classmate of of Brandon Stalker and Anthony Diaz told me uh, she was saying that she's not okay, but she will be. And I think that's how our community is really feeling right now. We're not okay right now, but one day with some time we will be. And you're so right. That just gave me the chills. Thanks so much, Ariel Onstadt, reporting for us outside Savage Arena. And you know, Jeff, you also talked to the vice president of the Fraternal Order of Police to give us some perspective on this. And I want to talk about um, kind of the as, as Ariel spoke to the police class that Officer Stalker was in and also his police brothers and sisters, and particularly the ones who were with him on that night uh, just eight days ago. I was there for Officer Diaz's um, funeral, and it is very reminiscent of all of the funerals that I've attended over my career. Um, there is a strong outpouring of support, but there's also a very emotional component to it. And I think that's what we're getting to and with the officer suicide um, in a very challenging time already where there is isolation and distancing from COVID and, you know, the, um, the protest over the summer and, and the changing in policing in general. Uh, it's, it's very easy to become uh, emotional and sometimes lose sight of just how important you are within you know the scope of your employment and quite frankly within the community that you serve and sometimes that uh, that emotion is too much and we have officers who um you know unfortunately will take their lives from time to time um the stress um the stress is immense uh, sometimes other officers will feel like you know it was my fault i should have been there i should have been on watch i should have had his back i should have had cover um, you know, they'll start taking a personal um, instead of objectively looking at the facts that were laid out afterwards. And um, sometimes those things become too much. And so uh, for this community and this police department uh, particularly to have three within that six month period is just going to be absolutely devastating. It'll, it'll shake them to their foundation. They'll, they'll wonder if they're doing the right things the right way, they'll wonder if they're responding appropriately, if they should be more assertive, if they should be less assertive. You know, no matter what um, they look at, they're going to question their positions and what they're doing right now. It's a tragic situation. And I've been thinking uh, the last week or so, and we've talked about this, as you drive about your everyday life, and you see these police officers who are still on the streets attending to it could be a car accident or it could be a domestic situation. Robberies uh, happen almost every day in the city of Toledo. 
they are doing their job day in and day out and they are carrying this heaviness. And some of the things uh, Jason Pappas said here is it'll shake them to their foundation. Are they doing things the right way? They're wondering if they're responding appropriately, if they should be more assertive, less assertive. They're always questioning. Um, and this is the mother here of Officer Brandon Stalker as well as we, as we take a live look right there, getting a lot of comfort uh, there today. You know, these are classmates and obviously the community is stepping up as well. We want to check in with our Amanda Fay and we understand that uh, social media has been very busy this morning, Melissa, with a number of people sharing their thoughts and prayers along the way. Amanda? Yeah, Jeff, it's really been remarkable. Hundreds and hundreds of condolences have been rolling in throughout the morning. I want to share some of them with you. You can also see some of them scrolling on the bottom of your screen as well. KJ Anderson writes, praying for his family, friends, brothers, and sisters in blue. May God comfort them all. Maria Esparza says, I was so sad to hear this young police officer lost his life in the line of duty. I have been praying for all of his loved ones left behind, especially his young children. May your soul rest in God's heavenly peace. Heather Kemp writes, I'm sorry for the loss of a good man, a great father. He was a good person to talk to. I went to high school with him and also skated at Ohio Skate. He will be missed by a lot. Rest easy, man. And Tammy, Tammy Kirk Roberts says, as a mom of a Leo, this just breaks my my heart for his mom, fiance, his young children, his family, and also all of TPD because they are also his family. I pray each day for all officers safety. Thank you for your services and to TPD and all the officers everywhere. Thank you. You leave home and your families every day, not knowing if you're going to return home. She continues as I tell my son every day before his shift, stay safe, pay attention, keep your eyes open, watch you and your fellow officers back and return home safely. You can share your condolences right now on our Facebook and Twitter pages by using the hashtag Officer Stalker. We're going to share your messages with the Toledo Police Department. Jeff and Melissa. And I, I know they will appreciate that. Once again, live, uh, that is Toledo Mayor Wade Capsicavage there sharing his condolences and thoughts with uh, the Brandon Stalker family there in the front row of Savage Arena. And clearly country music fan uh, he was, Officer Brandon Stalker. The song that's being played right now is a familiar one, You Should Be Here by Cole Swindell. Um, and what a message that is to hear among your fellow officers and the family here this morning, packed in Savage Arena. Uh, they are all wearing masks. I did wonder this morning if COVID and even the weather would, would affect the turnout and the attendance, and it really does not look like it did. This is uh, the Dia family. Uh, you can see Officer Dia's wife and his father here uh, wiping away tears. What a place it must uh, take him back to uh, just six months ago, like reliving a, a nightmare. And, and he's been very vocal with us in the Toledo media sharing um, his experience, his love for his son and his great respect. Uh, Officer Dia's Father Tony has great, great respect for uh, Toledo police officers. He, he was almost giving the Stalker family a playbook over the next yeah, few very months, helpful, next I few think. years, mm -hmm. really, for how they deal with this uh, going forward. Because unfortunately, you have to, I guess, learn on the job as as you go with with any situation that is as tough as this is. Um, Folks, we are continuing to monitor uh, things as we get everything in place. Now sitting at 948, the service expected to start at 10 o'clock in honoring uh, Officer Stalker, obviously there, and you see uh, start to uh, uh, get more people in their spots. And when you talk about who Officer Stalker was, uh, I think as you just heard Amanda read one of the messages, he did love roller skating bowling and he had a, motor, a motorcycle. He really looked forward to spending time with family at outings, camping and swimming, spending time obviously with his fiance and his two children, um, a sense of humor. A lot of people said he was just happy and had a contagious personality, very kind. You heard uh, his partner talk about spending so much time as, as best friends. I mean, we spend a lot of time together. You know, when you spend a lot of time with someone in the workplace, Sometimes you want to carry that friendship outside of the workplace, and they certainly did. They were always helping each other. But one thing that really stands out, as you mentioned from Washington Local as well, was that Officer Stalker loved baseball. 
he made a huge impact on people in the community at Whitmer High School, first as a player, then as a coach. Our sports director, Jordan Strack, has more on that. From 2012 to 2015, Brandon Stalker spent his days in the sunshine patrolling the infield for the Whitmer Panthers. As a freshman, his talents were quickly recognized. He started for the JV team and didn't make a single error until the final game of the season. He saw his first varsity action as a sophomore, but it wasn't a diving stop or a double play that he turned that his coaches or teammates remember most. So, so, some of the guys who played with him had tweeted something out that, that you know he was a guy that never said a negative word about anybody. That's 100% how I remember him. He was helpful, um, service oriented. He was the first guy to volunteer to do anything needed to be done. Um, um, never had a, he's one of those guys that, that I never saw have a bad day. Always a smile on his face. Um, you know, whether he's pitching or in the lineup or not, just an ultimate team player. It was those qualities that led Densmore to bring Stalker back to help coach after his playing days were done. He was focused on the betterment of the good of all people. Um, and, and like I said, service oriented. So when he came, when he came back to coach, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we had a shortage on our freshman staff. He was on our JV staff. And he'd stay late without really being asked and work with the freshmen. It was all about everybody else. It, that, that, that's just how he was. Those that know him know how much he loved being part of the Toledo Police Department. That was what he was passionate about. That's what he loved. Um, when he would talk about his job, always a smile beaming with pride. Um, and that's what he was. Um, it, 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 that, that's who he was. Um, I feel fortunate, um, looking back, fortunate that I got to coach him, I got to work with him, I got to know him. I, I think of him as a hero, and I think that's, that's what he was. That, that's how he, it's, it's not just how he died, it's how he lived um, that I would classify him that. Anybody who, 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 whose number one priority is to help those around him, to me that's a hero and that's what he was. Officer Stalker leaves behind a legacy as a hero in the Washington local school district, and it's not because of a game-winning home run or anything he did on the baseball field. It's simply because of how he treated people every single day. Jordan Strack, WTOL 11. Yeah, what, what kills you about hearing that kind of a story is that there was this leader role that he took on, that he was starting to develop into this. You, you can only imagine the potential of a young man who thought that he he was a leader among men on the baseball field. You can only imagine what it would have meant for the Toledo Police Department going forward. Yeah, and I'm sure Washington Local is going to just carry such a sense of pride with his legacy. It's really great to see people who knew him as a young guy just be so proud mm -hmm. of who he became and that sacrifice uh, that he ultimately gave. And if you're just joining us, I had remarked earlier I kind of had a hard time sleeping last night. I'm sure a lot of people here in the city did, but I personally was kind of reflecting. I think it is a time to reflect um, during a time like this. And I thought these officers are called to serve. Yeah. This is a very, um, I think, internal thing within an officer when they choose to take on this job. And I thought, who in your life are you laying your who would you lay your life down for? Certainly, I think we would all say our children, our spouse, maybe our parents, a sibling if, you're, if they're not too ornery. But you would lay down your life for your immediate family. Would you do it for a stranger? You know, another thing, as you said, uh, sleepless hours last night, thinking about going into today and how important it is in the community response. I thought about, I was trying to think of the schools that line this route and how those teachers, if they are mm -hmm. in school today, how they will treat this. Because I know where I went to grade school or where I went to junior high is right there along the route, Christ the King there on Harvest Lane, right between Monroe and Sylvania. I just wonder if those teachers are gonna take a moment to show their respects as that motorcade goes through there today. And, and businesses, for that matter, along the route. You're talking about a very busy stretch after the funeral is done today. will be making its way all the way down Monroe to the Toledo Memorial Park in Sylvania. And you've got a very commercialized route that I just, mm -hmm. I hope, if anybody's watching us, that they give themselves a moment today around noon to get out front, show your support for this a 24-year-old who gave his life to protect us, to protect and serve.
Well, I always hope that, but then when you see this, um, and now we've seen this for the second time in six months, uh, you realize that people do, they do go out. And I love that you pointed out the children because we've had some very special children who've really been leading the way, I think, in our community since this happened. Uh, a little boy named Max Teekmeyer, he's eight years old. He was camped out all weekend this selling is the cocoa kid, hot right? cocoa <laughs> at a stand in front of his West Toledo mom uh, home. And I, I say mom because, you know, we've interviewed Max and his mom, and this comes from, like you said, this comes from teachers in our community and parents in our community teaching children at a young age to respect police officers, to form relationships with police officers. And I know that's part of the community outreach for Chief Crawl right. that he wants to instill is a relationship at a young age. And there's the there's Max. Oh, he just he just touches my heart. And all the Toledo police officers showed up to buy a cup of cocoa. And the proceeds are gonna go to the family of uh, Officer Didn't he Stalker. do a lemonade he did this, stand for Right, Anthony in Dia? July, okay. when it was very hot, he did lemonade for the Officer uh, officer Diaz family, and he donated uh, the money to that. I think it was $6,000 to the family. And then the chief went out there, and he thanked Max. And um, I just think that's, when you see a child right. do that for all these grown men, I mean, that's got to tug at their hearts in a way nothing else can. And and you you mentioned the respect factor and something that yeah. Chief Crawl, even during the news conference on Wednesday, both he and Mayor Kepps Cabbage brought up the fact that they, they feel like something has been lost a little bit. So, yeah, it's on our shoulders mm -hmm. as parents to make sure that our kids and the future generations understand this commitment, this lifestyle, which you've brought it up this entire week, Melissa, talking about, you know, could I be an officer? Could I handle that duty, that service, that commitment to the community? Because it is, and as George Crawl, Chief Crawl has said time and time again, Brian Bird has said time and time again, it's a calling. Mm -hmm. And I think the chief has noticed, I think this has brought back, you know, one of the quotes that I saw from him that I read earlier, and I'll read again because it touches on what you're talking about. It really means a lot to the officers to know that what happened was tragic and they still have a majority of the people's support. So I read that as he's felt um, the heaviness of what the community has dealt with, mm -hmm. um, with racial tensions over the past and community relations in, in many police departments across the country. And, and now he is feeling uh, that support for the Toledo Police Department during this time. You know, there are moments in life when people come up to you and wish you well. And can you imagine what the family is going through right now as so many faces that you've never seen before, but they were they were members of Brandon's class, or they were the class before, or they were the class after, and they are coming up to the Stalker family to let them know that, hey, I'm there for you. Uh, we want to check in with our Kaylee Kirby. She is outside Savage Arena as well this morning as our coverage of this celebration of life continues. Kaylee, you've been monitoring the stream, the steady flow of folks as they make their way in to pay their respects. Yeah, Jeff, uh, just about a couple minutes ago, we saw pretty much the last group to come in. It had gotten pretty empty um, for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, they were kind of like the last stragglers to get inside. Um, but, you know, as you guys have been talking, Melissa and Jeff, about the support that's coming in and pouring in far and wide, just standing out here and seeing hundreds, and I say hundreds of cars um, lined up, from all of Ohio, from parts of Michigan. It's amazing to see, you know, that backing that this family, uh, Officer Stalker's family will now have. Uh, you guys probably can see it's pretty empty. There have been sheriff's cars uh, driving up and down, picking up those last uh, couple of people. But over the last maybe 10, 15 minutes, I haven't really seen too many people. Just lots of cars lined up really shows the amount of support that these officers, the Toledo Police Department and Brent, Brendan Stalker's family um, will now have uh, because of all of this, this tragedy that has happened. Back to you guys. Kaylee, thank you so much. And the funeral for Officer Brandon Stalker is beginning right now. Let's listen in. Stolen from us. Stolen from a loving family, parents, a fiance, two little kids, and innumerable loved ones. 
I had the humbling experience of meeting with Brandon's seven-year-old daughter, Kenna, so that she could share with me a few things that she wanted everyone to know about her daddy. While we played Barbies, Kenna said, I want everyone to know that my daddy taught me how to roller skate, except his skates were cooler than mine. She liked when her daddy would take her to the park. She did not like when he called her Kenna Elizabeth because that meant she was in trouble. One of Kenna's favorite memories that she shared with me was when her daddy took her to Aunt Nicole's house to go swimming. She said it was fun because she would get to play with her cousins all day and her dad would chase them all around and try to catch them. There are no words that can begin to bring comfort to a grieving family. To Kenna, Grayson, Ashley, and the rest of Brandon's family, you lost Brandon and we can never replace him. But if you look to your right and behind you, you'll see about 590 new family members who will be here for you. At first days of schools and graduations and weddings, we will be there. If you need a tire changed or a roof repaired, there's 590 volunteers. Call us. Each day at the Toledo Police Academy and each day during field operations roll calls, cadets and officers go through an inspection to make sure they are dressed appropriately and have the required equipment to go out and serve the public. It's imperative to pass inspection because if a cadet doesn't, they do not have the privilege of entering the academy classroom. This poem is entitled, The Final Inspection, and the author is unknown. <clears throat> the policeman stood and faced his God, which must always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shining just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, policeman. How shall I deal with you? Have you always turned the other cheek? To my church, have you been true? The policeman squared his shoulders and said, No, Lord, I guess I ain't. Because those of us who carry badges can't always be a saint. I've had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was rough. And sometimes I've had to be violent because the streets are awfully tough. But I never took a penny, Lord, that wasn't mine to keep, though I worked a lot of overtime when the bills just got too steep. And I never passed a cry for help, though at times I shook with fear. And sometimes, God forgive me, I've wept unmanly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here. They never wanted me around, except to calm their fear. If you've a place for me here, Lord, it needn't be so grand. I never expected or had too much, but if you don't, I'll understand. There was a silence all around the throne where the saints had often trod as the policeman waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, policeman. You've borne your burdens well. Come walk a beat on Heaven Street because you've done your time in hell. <clears throat> Associate pastor from North Point Church, Gabe Spiegel, will now sing Amazing Grace along with his wife, Morgan.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now, but now, Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for some of the technical glitches that you're experiencing there at home. That is part of the feed that is coming into our station from the site there at Savage Arena. Um, it sounds like it's getting better, Melissa. Okay, we're well, listening. How precious did that grace appear the hour of the Promise good is where my hope secures. He will my shield and portion me as long as I've endured. My chains are gone. I've been saved. Shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will be forever. Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman, Brandon's close friend and unofficial little brother, will now speak. Good morning, everyone in attendance. I want to thank you all for being here to celebrate the life of often Officer Brandon Michael Stalker. A lot of you may not know who I am, some of you may recognize me, but we considered each other brothers. Brandon may not have been my biological brother, but I'm one of the lucky ones, and I'm eternally thankful that I got the privilege to call him my brother. Since I was eight years old, 
Brandon has taken me, my younger brother, and countless others under his wing and treated us like family. From the many Friday nights at Ohio State Skating Rink that turned into us becoming a permanent fixture at each other's households. As Brandon would always say, Saturdays are for the boys. And that was made well known by him from the many nights swimming at my parents' house, cookouts, trips to Cedar Point, nights playing cornhole, or just doing family-oriented activities in general. Oh, let's not forget his love for Little Caesars. It just had to be at every single one of those events. I think we can attribute Brandon's warm and caring heart and nature to his mother, Cosette, my official second mom. Cosette has supported and pushed him to be the best at whatever was put in front of him. She did this by countless hours at the baseball fields with homework, motivating him through the police academy, and just spending quality time with him and her grandchildren. Brandon is her pride and joy, and there is no doubt how much she loves him. He is her heart and soul, and there is nothing she wouldn't do for him or her grandchildren. Brandon passed on the blessing of family with his seven-year-old daughter, Kenna, and his three-month-old son, Grayson. Whether it was taking her to her t-ball practices or her dance, Kenna was always his main focus. And his son soon became another form of focus for him. I remember coming home a little over a month and a half ago for Thanksgiving and seeing the pure joy on his face while holding Grayson was to live for. As a lot of us may know, he would have taken the time out of his day to help anyone that needed it, no matter who you were. That's what made him so great at his job. We become a very close-knit family, a blended family, much like you all have may, may have become with Brandon. How much did Brandon care about my future? When I told Brandon I was gonna be joining the Marine Corps, it wasn't why are you sure you wanna do this? It was how, how can I help you prepare for what's in front of you? Whether it was running with me in the, early in the mornings or working out. When I left for boot camp, I remember standing in the parking lot at MEPS, hugging him for the, and seeing him cry for the first time, saying, I'll see you soon, kid, followed by that big smile of his which was followed by him traveling with my parents to Paris Island for my graduation, which was the first time he had ever told me how extremely proud he was of me. And I will hold on and cherish those words forever. Also while there, on a sunny beach in South Carolina, he has Ashley to be his wife, his forever partner in crime. Brandon and Ashley's love for one another is undeniable. They supported each other in whatever they did. They have the love that truly would have stood the test of time. A love people dream of having. And that is one thing no one can deny them. So whenever you're feeling sad or a little bit down, try to remember that big contagious Brandon Stalker smile and know he's watching over us. Brandon, our friend, our brother, your son, your fiance, your dad, we will forever watch over your family like you have watched over us. We are eternally grateful for the lessons in humanity that you have taught us. Brandon, we love you. Rest easy. We'll take it from here. I got your six.
Toledo Mayor Wade Kapsikavich. A few things jump immediately out at you when you visit Brandon's uh, social media pages, especially Facebook. First thing that jumps out at you is how much he loved that family, how much he loved his family. Kenna, Grayson, his fiance, Ashley, mom and dad, he loved his family. He loved that dog. He loved that cat. Uh, this, was a, this was a man who loved his family, and that becomes clear. Uh, it, uh, it just becomes clear to all of us. Something else that jumps out at you is how much he loved being a police officer. Um, it, it's a cliche, I suppose, but it really was his dream to be a police officer. Uh, he loved everything about being a Toledo police officer. If you visited his Facebook page, you would see that the banner at the top of his page was a memorial to Officer Dia, uh, who we unfortunately lost uh, six months ago. And his profile picture uh, was a memorial to uh, Kevin Dumas, who the police department also lost last fall. Um, so his very identity, what, what was so important to him, what he projected to the world was a genuine love of police work, his police brothers and sisters. But there's one other thing that you would see it was, I'm showing my age, but I believe they called a meme of the word fear spelled out in an acronym. And it says that fear can stand for one of two things, forget everything and run, or face everything and rise. The choice is yours. I don't know what we all would do when we're confronted with fear. I suppose we would all react differently. There's no question what Officer Stalker did. There's no question that Brandon confronted his fear. He faced it and rose, rose to the occasion, rose for all of us, not just last Monday night, but every day that he served as a Toledo police officer. And as a result of his bravery in the face of fear, he has now risen to heaven. It is a dark time in our hearts. Sure, there are, there are bright reminders of the good that we all are capable of. God love little Max Titkemeyer, that, that little eight-year-old selling hot cocoa and raising $13,000 for the family. That's a bright light that uh, also exists in our city. But I'm sure Max would just as soon not have had to sell hot cocoa in the last week or so. I don't think any of us can know why events like this happen. I don't know. I don't know why it is that it always seems that the best, the best among us are, are taken from us. I suppose there might be some truth to the, that old adage I suppose it might be the same reason that when we're walking through a garden, we always pick the most beautiful flowers. Maybe God wants to be surrounded by beauty and, and greatness too. 
I don't know. I do know, though, that while every man dies, not every man really lives. Brandon did, though, because to really live, to really live, you have to love. You have to have the capacity for love. What is life, after all, without love? And Brandon loved. Uh, he loved Whitmer High School. He loved baseball. He loved working out. He loved lifting weights. He loved running. Uh, he had an infectious smile on his face. That's, that, that's someone with love in his heart. That's a full. I talked about how much I loved his dog. That dog barked every morning. <laughs> uh, love in his heart, love around him. That's really living. And as we know from the Gospel of John, no greater love can any demonstrate his or her life for another. He did that too. He laid down his life for all of us. And so while we will never see him again physically, he will always be with us, inspiring us to be better, to do more, to serve others, and helping us face our fears by rising. God bless Toledo and God bless one of its true heroes, Officer Brandon Stalker. Toledo Police Chief George Crawl. It feels like I stood on this stage yesterday at this very podium talking about the line of duty death of Officer Dia. I prayed to God that I would never stand on this stage again. I prayed to God that my police department would never have to endure such pain and shock. I prayed to God that this community would not lose another hero. And mostly, I pray to God that another TPD family would not be forced to experience the tragic loss of a loved one. Clearly, my prayers were not answered the way I would have wished. But my 30 plus years in law enforcement and my almost 55 years on this planet, I have learned that even though God didn't answer my prayers the way I wanted, he has a plan for us all. And Sadly, in this instance, we just don't know what it is right now. Officer Brandon Stalker was a hero. This is not debatable. He was a born and raised Toledoan who gave back to the community that gave so much to him. He loved being TPD. In short, in his short tenure at TPD, he set himself up to be a trusted go-to officer. I looked into his personnel file before today and found his latest personnel evaluation. His evaluator would use his phrases like, he consistently does a great job. He continues to learn. Officer Stalker has proven himself to be a reliable backup officer on traffic stops and for calls of service. I also found an exceptional performance report which highlighted his actions regarding the capture and subsequent prosecution of a registered sex offender who had recently committed another sex crime. Brandon, Brandon's watch commander, Lieutenant Kevin Tony, described him as solid, humble, a good officer, and very hardworking. Because of this, he was partnered up with Officer Mackenzie Schuster, a probationary officer. They quickly made a name for themselves after conducting a stop and arresting a suspect who illegally was in possession of a firearm. Quite simply, he was a great cop with great instincts and will be sorely missed. 
He not only was a leader at TPD, he returned to his alma mater, Whitmer High School, to help coach baseball. I heard his coach mention how proud he was that he was serving Toledo's residents, coming to practice wearing his uniform to show the players. You can't teach that. That's an innate calling. He truly loved this job. Briefly speaking about Brandon and Whitmer, not only was he a grad and a coach, but his fiance and mom work for the district, and his little daughter is a student at Washington Local Schools. I know how tight-knit Washington Local Schools parents, teachers, and students are, and I know that they are hurting. Rest assured, we are all praying for you. Ashley, Kenna, Grayson, Brandon's biological family and extended family, I promise you, you will not be forgotten. We will be there in body and spirit forever. You will have TPD support in every dimension of your life, like it or not. And I want to warn you all about something. You're about to see an outpouring of support from this community like you have never seen before. The people of Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, and this country in general are truly amazing. If you ask, if you think that I'm exaggerating, reach out to Jamie Dia and ask her. I was speaking with a very close friend last week and I asked, why does anybody want to do this job? The answer which I will never forget is, because except for days like this, this is the best job in the world. Brandon believed that. He embodied it and practiced it every day. I, for one, and I know I am not alone by any stretch of the imagination, will miss, his, hit, miss him and his energy. Now, briefly, I want to recap what law enforcement in general and TPD specifically has recently endured. March 11, 2020, we had an officer-involved shooting. March 16, 2020, COVID-19, the worst global pandemic since the Spanish flu hits. April 7, 2020, a detective in the gang task force is involved in an officer-involved shooting. July 4, 2020, Officer Diak was killed in the line of duty. August 11, 2020, Sergeant John Palmer died from a stroke while on vacation with his family. November 26, 2020, Thanksgiving Day, Officer Kevin Dumas dies while playing with his daughter in his home. December 5th, 2020, we had another officer-involved shooting at a domestic violence call for service. In total, in 2020, more than 95 sworn TPD officers tested positive for COVID-19. January 2nd, 2021, we had an officer-involved shooting on Secor Road. January 18th, 2021, Officer Stalker was killed in the line of duty. Now, all of those things happened in just the last 316 days and 10 hours. Yet, have we seen massive call-offs? Nope. Have we seen a reduction in self-initiated or proactive policing? Nope. Have we seen massive resignations? Nope. Have we seen a lot of complaining? Well, yeah, but rightfully so. This is a testament to all of you and Brandon. Whether you agree with my leadership style, my vision or direction I have taken TPD, I am proud to be your chief, I am proud to be the city's chief, but most important, I'm proud to have been Brandon's chief. I'd like to take a moment to personally thank the doctors and nurses from Mercy St. Vincent's Emergency Department who worked on Brandon. I watched in awe. Their skill, expertise, coordination, and care for Brandon and all of us who were in a state of shock that night was nothing less than extraordinary. I'd like to ask those heroes to stand up to be recognized. I know you're over there, stand up. Thank you again. 
Before we leave this hall today, I want to thank the University of Toledo for allowing us to use this arena and for continuing to be such great partners. And finally, to my brothers and sisters in the safety forces, thank you for attending today's service and showing the Stalker family the depth of our brother and sisterhood. You have humbled us all with your presence. Thank you. Abby Hunter, friend of Brandon and Ashley's. Number 514 is all over town. And people keep asking if there's anything they can do, but no one can give me back you. Pastor Brad Watchring, Senior Pastor at North Point Church.
Officer Brandon M. Stalker, age 24 of Toledo, passed away unexpectedly on Monday, January 18th, 2021 at Mercy St. Vincent Hospital. Brandon was born October 12, 1996 to David and Corsette Stalker right here in Toledo, Ohio. Brandon was a proud graduate in 2015 of Whitmer High School. Left to cherish Brandon's memory are his fiancee, Ashley, his children, Kenna and Grayson, his parents, David and Corsette, his sister, Crystal, special sisters, sisters Madison and Macy, brothers, Tyler and Billy, niece, Madison, nephew, Michael, soon-to-be in-laws, David and Brandy Omer, grandparents, William, David, Joan Lowe, Barbara Grover, and many aunts, uncles, cousins, other extended family members and dear friends. Brandon entered the Toledo Police Academy on July 31st, 2018, and graduated March the 2nd. Brandon was a proud Toledo police officer until the end of his watch. We're here this morning to grieve, to honor, to remember, and yes, to celebrate the life of Brandon Stalker. I was overwhelmed with the response of people that knew Brandon as I was flooded with information about his life. And this morning I've chosen four people to paint a picture of his life so that you too may know Brandon. Brandon's niece Madison wrote that Brandon wore many hats. He was a father to his loving children. He was a fiance to his future wife, Ashley. He was a son to his father, David, and mother, Corsette. He was a brother to two too many, blood-related or not. He was an uncle, a proud police officer, and a Christ follower. But that's not what made Brandon special. What made Brandon special was that he was one of those people that you are proud to know. The type of person that was happy that it was a Monday. The type of person to jump at any opportunity the world threw at him with a smile on his face, no doubt. The type of smile that was contagious and that could change anyone's mood. That was just the type of person Brandon was and how we will all remember him. Losing him wasn't just hard because he's gone now. It's hard because all of a sudden the best role model, the best person we knew and had in our life is gone. But one thing Brandon did leave us all was hope. Hope to one day honor him and acquire the qualities that we loved so much in Brandon. He's left us with a community strong and that has brought us all here today. I know Brandon would be happy to realize the impact he actually had within all of us and the community surrounding us. Brandon had 24 wonderful years on this earth, and he managed to do all this. A former teacher of Brandon's, Brandon had a criminal justice class with, wrote and said this, Brandon was in my graduating class of 2015. Brandon should be remembered as a kind and compassionate police officer and person. He started our program taking classes and knew it was his goal to be a police officer. Brandon was a quiet leader. He always did what was right and others followed his lead. He always did more than what was asked of him, such as helping younger students when they were struggling 
Brandon had a great sense of humor. No matter what life sent his way, he always managed to laugh his way through it. Brandon was the kind of police officer that we need today. He wanted to become a police officer to serve the community, not to wield power. When Brandon graduated, he sent the nicest note to me thanking me for my role and his success, and he stopped by the classroom to show us his uniform. It was just like of him to think of others like that. Brandon's mom wrote this. Parent never imagines I'm burying their child. I know I never did. Brandon was my world. He wasn't just my son, he was my best friend. It's so hard to put into words exactly how special and how deep the bond was that we shared. Those that know us know that growing up, we spent many hours with each other traveling and for baseball, school activities, and many fam family gatherings. Then before my eyes and way too fast, Brandon grew into a caring, mature, considerate young man who cared about everyone. I can't describe the depth of my pride for him. I'm going to miss his smile, his laughter, his jokes, so many things that we won't be able to experience. However, I know he will always be with me in my thoughts, my memories, my heart, and through my grandchildren. I make this promise to Ashley, to my grandchildren, and more importantly to my son, that I will be there for them until the day I am with you. Finally, from Ashley, Brandon's fiance. One day, you're going to hug your last hug, kiss your last kiss, and hear someone's voice for the last time. But you never know when that last time will be. Love every day as if it were your last time with the person that you love. I never understood how much that would hurt until it actually happened. Before we even started dating, Brandon made it known to me that he was going to be a police officer and that risk come along with the job. Yes, the risk scared me, but I knew I had to get to know him more. I've said this over and over, but our love was that fairy tale type of movie love. We were connected at the hip from day one and it never changed. It was hard letting him walk out of the door every night, but I knew that I had to trust him. A couple days after graduating from the police academy, Brandon and I were driving over to a friend's. I got upset because of the realness of him becoming a police officer. It started settling in and I became terrified. Terrified that he wouldn't come home to me one day. We pulled up to our friend's house and he looked at me. And he told me, I needed to trust him, to trust his training. And if anything, God forbid, ever happened, then he was going to do what he was meant to do. Then the song meant to be came on, and we sat there in the car, and he sang it to me. I knew right there, in that moment, that no matter what happened in the future, I was blessed to be with him. My fear became a nightmare on that Monday, January 18th. I felt a heartbreak I never knew possible. I should be planning our wedding, but instead, I found myself planning his funeral. I want to be mad at the situation, but I know that Brandon died a hero, and that's all he ever wanted to be, a hero. He was not only a hero while wearing that badge, Brandon impacted so many people. I know this is going to be hard, but I also know that Brandon will in some way always be with me and guiding me. 
As I prayed this week for Ashley, for Brandon's family, for our community, I asked God, what would you have me share? And I was reminded of a few passages of Scripture. I think if I could leave one verse with you this morning, it's what our mayor already shared. From John 13, excuse me, 15 verse 13, Jesus is speaking to his followers and he said this, there is no greater love, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now don't be misled this morning. Jesus is speaking specifically about his life and that he would sacrifice his life willingly, knowingly, and pay the ultimate price for you and I that we could have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But Jesus is also providing an example to us of what love looks like. A person who's willing to put their life on the line for another, to sacrifice their life for the life of another. And that is what Brandon has done. And that is why we honor him this morning and why we remember his family in our prayers. John chapter 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will really never die. Do you believe this? I have three questions for you this morning. Number one, what are you placing your hope in? It could be very easy this morning to be angry at God, angry at the world, overwhelmed with grief, feeling hopeless. Because quite honestly, life doesn't seem fair. But God never promised us fair. We live in a world that's broken and fallen. What are you placing your hope in? I would ask you this morning to put your hope in God as he's revealed to you through Jesus Christ and in the promises of his word. May you find them. Secondly, I want to ask you this morning, what will you be remembered for? What kind of impact will you have made when you are gone? Will you be known as a caring, generous, ever-loving, sacrificial, always forgiving person as Brandon was? Or will you be known as a person who has lived for themselves. There's an odd Old Testament book called Ecclesiastes and an odd passage that Solomon wrote, one of the wisest men to ever live. He had it all. Everything that you could possibly think of from a perspective that the world measures as success, he had it. And listen to the word that he penned, inspired by God for us to read. Solomon said, it's better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. After all, everyone dies. So the living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. A wise person thinks a lot about death.
But a fool thinks only about having a good time. What will you be remembered for? And finally, my last question to you this morning is will you be ready to stand before God and give an account for your life, trusting as Brandon did that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father? Psalm 39, verse 4, God, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. God, remind me how short and fleeting life really is. Brandon was a wonderful man. He was an amazing police officer. And he will be a fixture in our hearts forever. May he rest in peace. And may you rest in peace knowing he left this earth doing something that he loved surrounded by people whom he loved in a community that loved him. Gabe and Morgan Spiegel.
Final radio call for Officer Brandon Stalker. Attention, our crew. McKenna Stalker has an important announcement to make. I love you, Dad, and I got you six done. Here's Chris. Dispatch to Unit 111. Dispatch to Unit 111. Officer Brandon Stalker on all call. Attention all units. Officer Brandon Stalker, ID 2789, has answered his last call. Officer Stalker was appointed to the Toledo Police Department on July 31st, 2018. He answered his final call on January 18th, 2021. From the entire family at the Toledo Police Department, Officer Brandon Stalker, you and your family will remain in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. The air is clear. And now the Toledo Police Honor Guard will render the final salute. Pastor Brad, Brad Watchring. Would you stand with me? Father, it's with great sadness and grief deep within our hearts that we come before you this morning. We stand in honor of Officer Brandon Stalker. We thank you for the life that he gave for his community, for his family, for his friends. We ask, Heavenly Father, that his life and his memory and his honor would continue to resonate within each and every one of our hearts for the remainder of our days here upon this earth. We give him back to you this morning, knowing that he belongs to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, all uniformed personnel, please cover and fall in outside. Incredibly emotional uh, final minutes there at Savage Arena this morning. Once again, joining us live here in the studio as folks, uh, whether you're watching on the WTOL.com website, whether you're watching on the app or you're watching on your TV screens there at home, uh, we have been sharing in that moment with you here, watching everything unfold there at Savage Arena. And Melissa, uh, we knew it was coming. Um, we, we have gone through a number of these. Uh, unfortunately, and that last call without fail. Um, it is one of the hardest things to listen to the family, uh, the fellow partners, the fellow men and women of the Toledo Police Department, even those who are not directly affiliated with TPD in the stands. You can see the wave of emotion over them as they listen to that, the finality 
Um, but but I, I but I want to point out as well. This is this is important for the family, and that has what uh, we have learned this week, and we learned it back in July as well. This this provides uh, just another step toward closure uh, for this family as well. And I know uh, you and I have had our own uh, difficulties getting through listening to that. It is emotional. As we heard his daughter Kenna's voice, I believe it was on the final call. Uh, to her daddy and to see the final salute with the Toledo Police Department on her guard. And just to hear this personal service, obviously it was a Christian service. This was the pastor from North Point Church. It was their worship team that uh, sang these very personal songs, um, talking about uh, being a hero. Uh, they talked about prayer, uh, one of the songs, um, some of the words were, I kissed you goodbye a thousand times, but never like I'm doing right now. 21 shots going up for the officer down. Um, yeah, we, we immediately, I mean, once you and I started really linking into those lyrics, we immediately looked that song up. And it was, it was definitely uh, hard to listen to, but as you read it over, once again, I mean, all of these, a celebration of life and the reality of what we're dealing with today, but um, very difficult. Let's, let's go back to the live pictures if we can as um, we look, uh, as they wrap things up for this service, this celebration of life. Um, and what you, are the you know, I wanted to point out uh, the, the pastor from North Point Church, mm -hmm. Brad Watchering, um, who so eloquently um, spoke there on Brandon's behalf. And he, Melissa, he said, Brandon was the kind of police officer that we need today. And even, I wanted to point out as well, folks, some of you on social media even asking the question, if you notice on the lapel of the pastor, he was wearing the number 2789. And Melissa, we looked that up. That was, we were thinking, you know, his badge number was 514, but what did we find out about that? Uh, this was his unit number, I believe. Uh, I his ID, his ID number, number. Yeah. his ID number. Uh, you just saw Representative Marcy Captor there holding a folded American flag, uh, which will most likely be given to the family at some point. I wanna also share something. You know, I think the love story, and there she goes, let's see um, this moment here. Some of the things that we learned about Brandon, in fact, um, Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman getting up uh, dressed in his Marine uniform uh, this morning, um, talking about Ashley. You talk about that love uh, that they shared, and I, I had to smile, I laughed a little bit when he said his forever partner in crime. <laughs> yeah, right? that, that is really touching. Um, and as we see Representative Captor present this flag, um, you know, again, going back to the love story that these two shared, it was, that's the, that's the thing that happens when people die is you learn all about their relationships and all the people that love them. And uh, one of the things that Ashley posted, I think was very poignant, and she posted it on July 4th, 2020, which was the day that Officer Dia was killed. And she posted this. Every night before leaving for work, Brandon says, I love you, see you in the morning. To anyone else, those are just words, but to me, they mean a bit more. I hold on to those words until I hear the garage door open and the dog barking like crazy because she knows her dad is home. He is safe. I got to hear that garage door and the dog bark this morning, but Anthony Diaz's wife does not have those words to hear before he leaves anymore or a door slamming in the morning, a dog barking, the sounds of Velcro as the vest comes off. Mm -hmm. She doesn't get to see him in the morning now. My thoughts and prayers are with her and those two little boys. I cannot imagine ever getting a call like that. And to all of TPD, I'm sorry for the loss of your brother. The Blue Line family is here for you. And here she is six months later. Once again, if people are just joining us, what you were just reading right there is Brandon Stalker's fiance writing immediately after uh, Anthony Dia uh, was killed in the line of duty. Saying that she couldn't imagine this happening for him to not come home. But you heard their pastor also share some words about 
kind of their relationship and, and her fear that this would happen. And Brandon had always assured her that this was a risk of the job. And they had some, you know, very telling moments within their relationship about this. He had told her, I'm going to become a police officer, you know, and we heard his coach and we and we heard the police chief and the mayor talk about how this was a goal when he went into the criminal justice program. He always wanted to be a police officer. And, you know, I think that's another thing that I think about, too. It's not just the sacrifice of a life on a day like today. These families sacrifice day in and day out. And that's just what we heard in Ashley's words upon hearing six months ago of the passing of Officer Dia. This is something that is a fear daily, but so much pride we see today. Yeah. Police Chief George Crawl getting up there as well. I mean, he, he started his remarks, Melissa was saying, I prayed to God that I would never have to stand on this stage again. Uh, he also went through talking about some of the performance reports that Brandon had had, the high marks he continued to say. Sergeant Tony, uh, who we've become familiar with over the years, um, saying that, you know, he, exemplary, officer, solid, one of the words he used. Let's listen to a bit of amazing grace right now as we watch these final moments inside of Savage Arena. My God, my Savior has Once again, live pictures, and Melissa, you were talking about this earlier, Representative Marcy Captor uh, there sharing her condolences with the mother of Brandon Stalker. Uh, you were just listening to Gabe and Morgan Spiegel, who you said are on the worship team at North Point Church with Brad Watring, who is the pastor there. Uh, this is Brandon's mother, Cosette Stalker. Um, she has very similar to Tony Dia, been very vocal about her love and her pride for her son and saying he was my only boy, but he was also my best friend. Um, and so you can see right now the family just being comforted by uh, local politicians and different members of safety services right now as the uniformed members uh, are getting ready to join the processional. And just there in front of the camera, we saw uh, Officer Stalker's very close friend, uh, Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman, who gave uh, at times humorous mm -hmm. uh, speech about his friend. He said he loved Little Caesars at every event. Um, he talked you know what, we've got, I, we do have I, I, I understand we do okay. have a clip from when he spoke, uh, calling himself, there he is again. Uh, so much composure as he was there on the stage. Listen. We are eternally grateful for the lessons in humanity that you have taught us. Brandon, we love you. Rest easy. We'll take it from here. I got your six. And I got your six, meaning I got your back. That's Absolutely. something I learned today. I didn't quite know what that meant, but that's what that means. I got your back. You, you know, there's, there's another thing to, to take into consideration here as we watch once again uh, everybody uh, depart from Savage Arena after uh, meeting with new friends and old friends as well. But um, the Fraternal Order of Police in Columbus telling us this week, you're going to notice a lot of things. And Melissa, you and I jotted this down as the service rolled on. But there was honor, there was tribute, and there was respect. Uh, out of every single person that was there on, on the floor. They got a chance to hear from the men and women in the Toledo Police Department and elsewhere, Lieutenant Lenhart, as well as Police Chief George Crawl. Take a listen.
to Kenna, Grayson, Ashley, and the rest of Brandon's family. You lost Brandon, and we can never replace him. But if you look to your right and behind you, you'll see about 590 new family members. Once again, Lieutenant Kelly Lenhart right there, Chief George Crawl also um, talking extensively about the officer that he had. He talked about this being an example of leadership. And Melissa, he said, and I wrote this down because it stood out for me, you can't teach that kind of stuff. One of the things that I really, um, that really touched me too is with Lieutenant Lenhart there when she said, she was playing Barbies with his daughter, Kenna, and she said, my daddy taught me how to roller skate. But his, his were it's always cooler, right? It's one of cooler, his favorite right? things to do, yeah. Yeah, but she said his skates were always better than mine or, or cooler to that effect. Uh, we want to check in as well with Ariel Onstadt. Uh, Onstadt, she is uh, outside Savage Arena for us this morning as we start to see more and more people make their way back. A Ariel, I was, I was struck, and Melissa, you and I were talking about it here at the studio as well. I was struck by the parking lot that Douglas Road became today. And obviously, you were talking hundreds upon hundreds of people that made their way in and are now making their way out. Jeff, it's really incredible, and I think it's incredible how quickly this happens. I mean, just around 8 this morning, there were maybe 10 cars, and within the matter of 15 minutes, there were more than 100 stretching all the way down here on North Douglas Road. We have different officers from departments across the state of Ohio and Michigan coming out to pay their respects and beginning to get in line for the processional. Right across the way, we have cars from the township of Elyria in Ohio. Of course, they came out to honor and pay their respects. And of course, we have Avon Lake and some other places outside of Cleveland as well, really making sure to show that loyalty and what it means to them to be here. I mean, you heard the mayor say during the service that when we're faced with fear, we can run from it or we can rise to the challenge. And people here today are recognizing the sacrifice that Officer Brandon Stalker made and wanting to show him their support. The processional is just beginning to, I can see cars tightening up as they're getting ready down the way. You can see a Toledo police cruiser with its lights flashing. Soon the hearse will make its way around the corner of Savage Arena and then back down around here on North Douglas where it will be led towards Toledo Memorial Park. Right now, it looks like it is just people coming out and beginning that waiting game of being in the right moment at the right time to begin the processional down the street towards Toledo Memorial Park. I think one of the things that's the most striking to me is just we've been saying it this entire service and even before just the show of support and the fact that none of these officers from other departments had the same relationship with Brandon that his Toledo Police Department colleagues did. And yet they're here to show their support and it's a truly special thing to see. Now this will be a uh, moving shortly and we will show you another look in just a bit but Jeff Melissa I think just seeing the community coming together is really what's so special today it really is and I mean if you've ever had someone do something kind for you in a time of need it it will bring you to your knees um, in just appreciation and I think that is what the family is feeling today and the chief said you're not going to get rid of us, uh, family, stalker family. Let's hear from the chief on what exactly he said about the support of the Toledo Police Department. And I want to warn you all about something. You're about to see an outpouring of support from this community like you have never seen before. The people of Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, and this country in general are truly amazing. If you ask, if you think that I'm exaggerating, reach out to Jamie Dia and ask her. 
Ariel making mention of uh, the folks that are starting to make their way out of Savage Arena as we continue to look on the inside. And we want to give you a little bit of a scope of the route once again. The, one of the calls that went out early on from not only the city of Toledo, but also the Toledo Police Department. As we make our way down Douglas, we will go up here. We will take a left and go all the way down Monroe Street. And Melissa, we were talking about it there right by the Best Buy and Kroger. Uh, as we make our way through Sylvania Avenue and on past Franklin Park Mall and Talmadge. Melissa, we talked about all of the businesses, the commercial feel that this entire stretch has way, making its way all the way into Sylvania. And we just hope that if folks have a few minutes today, they can stop out within the next hour and just continue to show your support, your, your appreciation for what this day means. And I'm absolutely sure they will. Yeah. You know, it's always amazing to see how many people, in fact, come out and show their support. And, and like I said, I think, too, led in this case of by some children this week. Uh, the mayor talked about Max Tiekmeyer, who mm -hmm. had the lemonade or the, the hot cocoa stand. Uh, he did lemonade for Officer Dia back in July. He raised $13,000 for the Stalker family. And we also had another young boy from Florida who actually uh, has been running miles. He ran 800 miles for uh, heroes who died in the line of duty. And actually his 800th mile mm -hmm. this week was for Officer Stalker, a little boy named Zachariah Cartledge, 12 years old. Uh, he started a nonprofit. You can look it up. It's called Running for Heroes, and he's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, which he's donated to uh, area first responders. Now, coming back here to Savage Arena, uh, the mayor, obviously, the leader of the city of Toledo, and uh, he gave some very good perspective, I think, about Officer Stalker and uh, his history as a Toledo police officer. So let's listen to uh, Toledo Mayor Wade Kapsikavich right now with and, that. And his history just as a community As a member. person. Yeah. Dark time in our hearts. Sure, there are, there are bright reminders of the good that we all are capable of. God love little Max Titkemeyer, that, that little eight-year-old selling hot cocoa and raising $13,000 for the family. That's a bright light that uh, also exists in our city. You know, Mayor Kips Cabbage also talking, Melissa, today, he said when you go into a flower patch, you always want to pick the most beautiful one. And he was making a, uh, he was trying to tie that into how heaven had chosen Brandon at this point. And, you know, words of comfort trying to, trying to help all of us understand this as we go through this. And I noticed uh, the family, the Stalker family, chose a Christian service, and that was one of the points uh, that their pastor also brought up, I think, during this service as well, and that is that uh, God has a plan. And if that's what you believe, then you know that, uh, that Brandon is right in heaven right now. And uh, he quoted John 15, 13, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends and he shared that Jesus said this providing an example to us as what real love looks like and that is to sacrifice for the love and the life of another. When we when we talked to the uh, Fraternal Order of Police this week Melissa we were asking them does does age matter when when you're talking about how the force can handle this emotionally uh, Chief Crawl immediately said they called in other officers from around the state who are trained to help them get through this emotional toll, make sure that they can go day in and day out doing their job, but also being able to handle the mental strain that is on them. And I don't know if we have it available. Uh, you can let me know. But we, as we said, we talked to uh, the Fraternal Order of Police trying to figure out how, how do you process this as a force? This 24-year-old mm -hmm. who was, and, and so many people have, have used the phrasing that 
just at the onset of life to, to have this taken away. Here's what he said. It doesn't matter how old the officer is. Um, we're a family. You know, all law enforcement in every community is a family. And when you lose a family member, it doesn't matter if it's an elderly family member or a young family member. It's tragedy. It's, it's tragic. It's devastating. And in both of these cases, while there are some different components as far as, you know, raising the children and making sure that the, the, the widow is taken care of, uh, you know, is the house paid off? Do they have enough life insurance? And some of the extra questions that go along with the youth. Uh, the fact of the matter is the loss is a loss and it's tragic regardless of whether the person is 25 or 55 and uh, i think that's what they're experiencing is that tragic loss and although like i said there are some extra questions that come with youth i think the feeling of loss is exactly the same And here is some information on how to donate to Officer Stalker's family. Uh, the Toledo Police Federal Credit Union is the one that really is recommended by Toledo Police. That's because 100% of your donation goes to his family. There is a GoFundMe that was started by the same person who started a GoFundMe after the death of Officer Dia. However, GoFundMe does take a portion of that. So again, it's uh, really recommended that you donate to that Toledo Police Federal Credit Union. There are also some apparel fundraisers out there, but I think this is the most secure way to make sure that your money goes right to and directly to the Stalker family. And we have all of these various ways you can donate. And again, links to those apparel uh, donations at WTOL.com. Whether you're watching there at home, maybe you're on the go watching on the WTOL app, team coverage, this special celebration of life that we have been bringing you today. We want to check in with our Kaylee Kirby, who is also there at UT Savage Arena, just across Douglas Road, where uh, that parking lot starts. Traffic is going to start moving here pretty soon. Yeah, that's correct, Jeff. I'm a little bit closer to where people will start filing out of the arena and uh, head over to their cars. I'm right across the street from Douglas um, where they will start getting to their cars. Just a few minutes ago, we had a big chunk of officers uh, come out and make their way to their patrol vehicles. Um, but since then, I haven't really seen too many make their way over here. I did stop and talk to one officer uh, right before we uh, came live for this um, for this chat right here, but um, he didn't want to go on camera. He didn't want to do an interview, but he said he came from Michigan and um, I asked him, you know, why was it important for him to be here? And he said, you know, it's it's his job and it's his honor to come out and, and pay respects and support one of his brothers in blues, uh, one of his brothers in blue, actually, uh, just to be out here and, and support and you know, he didn't want to be on camera, but he said it, it's important for him to be here. It's important for other police officers to be here and just show that support and show that not just Toledo police have have officer stalkers families back, but everyone uh, around the country, especially here locally, have his back. Jeff. Kaylee, thank you so much. Reporting there live outside Savage Arena there for us as we continue to hear. Uh, you know, the one thing that was told to us this week, Melissa, was uh, we tried to understand, get our minds wrapped around a guest list. Who all is showing up? Who do we need to be prepared for as far as uh, different towns that will be represented? And we were told again and again, we don't know. We don't know. This is this is an outpouring that every time something like this happens, it is just a show of support that sometimes we know who's coming, but most times we don't. And in each case, it's a whole lot of people. We saw them inside a Savage Arena, and we should be getting pictures. Here we go. These are live pictures now from outside of Toledo Memorial Park in Sylvania, right on Monroe Street, where uh, Officer Stalker will be laid to rest. Uh, this will be where the motorcade, the processional comes to an end. And then this portion of the day of the funeral service will be private. Uh, media is uh, not going to be there, but we will provide you coverage from up until there. And Jeff, you talked this week, uh, again, to gain some more perspective to Jeff Clegg from Toledo Memorial Park. And he gave you some insight about what this portion of the service 
uh, will entail. Yeah, it, he was trying to, I mean, they have gone through this time and time again, more often than even they said they were ready for, but they made the, they made the adjustments uh, as necessary. I, I asked him what he has learned over time in getting through such a difficult time, not only for the Toledo Police Department and the greater Toledo community in general, but also his employees there at Toledo Memorial Park. Here's Jeff Clegg. I apologize, we will get that. I'm, I'm gonna read a little bit what he told us, Melissa. He said, once again, Jeff Clay, who is the president CEO of uh, Toledo Memorial Park out there in Sylvania, he said, our job is to make that whole experience of the loss of someone a little bit easier to handle. That's why the service itself is so important. He said, that's our piece of the puzzle. We want everything to go without any hiccups according to plan. And then after the fact, we want that area to look as nice as it can because these family members come back sometimes every day for months on end just to visit their loved one. And Jeff, we're taking a look right now at live pictures uh, as the family, uh, Ashley Omer, who is Brandon Stalker's, Officer Stalker's fiance, his daughter Kenna, and their three-month-old son Grayson are taking a final stop by uh, Officer Stalker's casket before they join the processional route. And I think when you, when you hear about what, what I read earlier about Ashley's thoughts, uh, getting ready to marry uh, Officer Stalker, planning a wedding, but now instead planning a funeral, uh, this song was played. Um, and what, what's the name of the song? The song is, I just had it, I apologize. It is Officer Down Officer by Hannah Down. Ellis, sent, sung uh, this morning by Gabe and Morgan Spiegel. And they are a married team on the worship team at North Point Church where, uh, who's provided the service this morning. Listen to the words in this song. And I talked with you and begged you, but you didn't come back around. As you read through the lyrics of that song, uh, it, it, it's almost as if they wrote it within the last week. The problem is, that's not the case. This song exists because of other situations that have unfolded, the tragedies around the country that have unfolded, just like what Toledo has gone through twice in the matter of almost six months. And you are seeing the honor guard get in place right now to take Officer Brandon Stalker into the processional uh, and on his way to his final resting place at Toledo Memorial Park. Again, we talk about traditions at the police funeral being ones that represent honor, service, and gratitude. Full military style honors for these heroes who die in the line of duty. Uh, this is a high honor to be part of this, to stand vigil as they have done during this service to take watch, one at the head and one at the foot of the casket. Um, and in many departments, you will see this happening, them standing guard 24 seven until this day, until the funeral. And some of the members that you're seeing here as part of the honor guard include the casket watch, the pallbearers, the color guard. All of these functions require um, more than a dozen people as you see um, Officer Stalker getting ready to be saluted here. They all have experience or training for standing guard, carrying the flags, folding this flag that now drapes his casket and performing other duties, again, that are a part of the full honors, the full military style honors of someone who has died in the line of duty. 
Let's watch now together in silence as we pay tribute to this hero of the Toledo Police Department. Melissa, you and I, uh, unfortunately, we've learned this one too many times here, but a part of that honor guard also selected to be with the family and, and to allow them to heal, to guide them through this process so that things aren't so tough over these few days. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you just saw the family, uh, they're going to be joining the processional right now. And and I, I noticed the camera got quite close to the police chief, George Crawl, who said during the service that it felt like just yesterday that he was here uh, with Officer Diaz's funeral. And he had prayed to God that we would never have to be here again and that the Toledo Police Department would not have to experience the tragic loss of a loved one again. And he says, obviously, his prayers were unanswered, but God has a plan for us all. And he called Officer Stalker a hero, saying... Uh, why would anyone want to do this job? Well, Officer Stalker knew it as the best job in the world, and he embodied being a hero every single day. There are moments, as you've been watching with us there at home or at work, wherever you may be this morning, uh, that we understand it demands respect, it demands reverence, and, and I hope you appreciate the fact that we allow you uh, to, to kind of share in the silence of, of this moment. Um, I'll tell you what, it's... Uh, this job is not easy some days going through things like this as a parent, I know. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I was watching some of those faces of some of those uh, young officers in the crowd. Uh, not all of them from Toledo, as we said, Melissa, stretching all over the state of Ohio and southeastern Michigan. And uh, the FOP telling us this week that some of these officers will be going through the questions about why? Why did this happen? Um, how can I be a better officer? How can I, how can I 
uh, do my job. Um, a lot of those questions that George Crawl has talked about. But, but he says they never waver. They never get far from the point that they're saying, this is my job, this is my duty, I understand my commitment, this is my passion. And I think what you're feeling is is very normal and to be expected. You're a member of the community, and we all are. And, and you know, we kind of just go about our daily lives every day. And, and what we don't always see until moments like this is all of the care and, and the sacrifice that's going on every single day on our streets. And any of these Toledo police officers would be going to any other part of the state should this happen there, and they have done that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have brought you some moments from inside of the funeral service this morning. One of the most emotional, I think, is the end of uh, the final call. And um, this one involves Officer Stalker's daughter. So I think that, that it's even more personal. And, and this is part of the tradition that we see during uh, a police funeral. So let's uh, revisit that moment once again. Final radio call for Officer Brandon Stalker. Attention all crews, McKenna Stalker has an important announcement to make. I love you, Dad, and I got you six done. Here's Chris. Dispatch to Unit 111. Dispatch to Unit 111. Officer Brandon Stalker on all call. Attention all units. Officer Brandon Stalker, ID 2789, has answered his last call. Officer Stalker was appointed to the Toledo Police Department on July 31st, 2018. He answered his final call on January 18th, 2021. From the entire family at the Toledo Police Department, Officer Brandon Stalker, you and your family will remain in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. The air is clear. So once again, the final call, it has become tradition at, in such a s uh, sad moment uh, for that service. But once again, you're looking at the hearse as it gets ready uh, for the funeral procession making its way out to Toledo Memorial Park. We have been in, inundated with a lot of you out there on social media, sending us emails and whatnot, uh, sharing some of your thoughts and feelings here on what we have deemed a celebration of life. Amanda Fay joining us once again as we continue to uh, talk about this 24-year-old uh, officer gone too soon. Amanda. Yeah, Jeff, I don't think it's much of a surprise, actually, that hundreds and hundreds of people have sent in their messages throughout the course of the morning and now heading into the afternoon. I shared some earlier, and some of them quite personal, someone talking about, you know, how they used to roller skate with Officer Stalker, and then some coming from complete strangers. I'm going to share some of those with you right now. Sherry Fulmer says, sending prayers to the family, fellow officers and friends of a young man gone too soon. Francis Cunningham says, I'm so sorry that another young police officer lost his life just doing his job, leaving a seven-year-old and a three-month-old baby. My thoughts and prayers to his family. My heart is breaking for him. Thank you for your service to us all. Frida Arnett, Pauliff writes, rest in heaven, Officer Stalker. Your time on earth was much too short. I pray for comfort for your grieving family and friends. I pray for the good Lord to protect all of our TPD. So very sorry for the loss of another officer. Tom Bedner says, thank you, TPD, for all you do in protecting the citizens of Toledo. Keep your head up. You have a lot of support. It is just an ugly world right now. Don't give up. Don't give in. We need you. Rest in heaven, Officer Stalker. So you see those uh, support condolences, not just going out to Officer Stalker and his family, but also for the whole family of the Toledo Police Department. And we want to be able to share those messages with the police department. So please feel free to pass along your messages and your condolences on our Facebook or Twitter pages. Use the hashtag Officer Stalker and we'll be sure to pass those along. Just some really great words uh, expressed from our community this morning. Jeff and Melissa. And, and Amanda, once again, it, it lets us know that as we continue here and watch that there are those out there feeling uh, the emotions of sitting and watching this service. Once again, we are so honored to be able to bring that to you here today. 
If you would like to line the processional route, you are welcome to do that right now. This is going to uh, leave the University of Toledo, travel down Douglas Road to Monroe Street. Now, Douglas Road uh, will be closed from Door Street to University Hills Boulevard. Um, so do prepare for some long delays and closures if you are heading out and about right now. But you are encouraged to line this processional route, which ends at Toledo Memorial Park there on Monroe Street. Um, per the, the family's request, there will not be any media inside Toledo Memorial Park. That is where the private portion of this service will take place. But, you know, you want to talk about paying your respects. We've seen so much respect and gratitude given to this very young man and his family. And, you know, we've talked to family of uh, heroes in the past and they tell us how important and meaningful it is to see people lined up to just give that little wave and that little moment of respect uh, to their fallen officer and really support for the entire Toledo Police Department and the chief has said that multiple times that they really do feel and see whether it's through your social media presence or uh, whether it is lining up on this processional route, they see and they feel what you are sending them. Yeah, in talking with the president CEO of Toledo Memorial Park just yesterday, Melissa, Jeff Clegg telling us they are, they are already foreseeing 850 services here in this calendar year. Uh, that they are prepared for, but nothing they say. And, and, and we were all so uh, amazed to find out, Jeff shared with us, and you and I were talking about this last night, this is the second largest cemetery in the state of Ohio. A former mayor, D. Michael Collins, is buried here, as well as Officer Dia. Um, and yes, certainly they take great care in these types of services and they really prepare for it and they've prepared space to be able to handle a, something like this there. In fact, uh, they added a 9-11 memorial there, as you all know, and I'm sure you know there at home, um, and that created the moment. They said they knew services of this type would soon follow, unfortunately. But here's Jeff Clegg uh, when we spoke with him yesterday. Listen. We dedicated the 9-11 memorial. We knew we were going to be, um, we were going to be doing these kind of services. Um, that area out there is designed for large numbers. Um, when we did the uh, Dia service, um, he, uh, because of his faith being a Muslim, he wanted to be buried with his family, um, which is in one of the corners of the cemetery. Um, even though we are 380 acres and we have 10 miles of streets, we had nearly a thousand cars and it, we just weren't uh, geared for that kind of numbers in that area of the cemetery. Um, fortunately, uh, when we did design the 9-11 Memorial, we left a lot of green space around there because we knew these things were gonna happen and we were the logistics of just getting that many uh, family and cars and emergency vehicles is, is quite a task, but this is what we do. And we just saw, Jeff, uh, people making their way across Monroe mm -hmm. Street. Um, I hope Kroger doesn't mind today. They're <laughs> going they to have a few cars in the back of that lot. Probably. I was just looking at the temperature here on the screen, too. 32 degrees yeah. uh, bundled up, and I saw some kids there. They had their chairs ready to just await this processional, which uh, could take about an hour before mm -hmm. we get to Toledo Memorial Park. And you can see that uh, the safety service officers are already lined up, ready to go. But as uh, Jeff Clegg said from Toledo Memorial Park, uh, this could be well into a thousand cars uh, making their way all the way down Douglas and Monroe Street. And uh, it could be quite a while, but also quite an opportunity to just get out there just for even a moment and catch a glimpse and, and give a little salute. In talking with Jeff yesterday and, and, and trying to understand, I mean, at the very end, he was so, so well spoken and, and talking about this moment in time and and saying this is this is what we do. You know, we're we're built for this. And our Emma Henderson is live outside of Toledo Memorial Park right now, which is where Officer Stalker will be laid to rest right now. Emma, we just saw a small group heading across Monroe Street, some children, they're bundled up. What are you seeing out there right now? 
Well, Melissa and Jeff, in the last 15 minutes or so, we have had dozens of people show up and start to line the streets here. Off to my right, there is a large parking lot here. And so a lot of people are parking here. And then I'm going to shift this way and we can show you those are the people across the street. This is the scene that they're going to see when they turn into the actual cemetery itself. But then if we turn this way, you can see the large number of people that have already started lining the street. We've started speaking with a few of them. Some of them are actually family members. Um, some of them do not know Officer Stalker, um, but we can only anticipate that this crowd is continuing to grow considering there were only three or four people here about 15 minutes ago. Jeff and Melissa. Man, I'll tell you what, when I saw that camera pan over Melissa, that warmed my heart to see folks already out there. It really is uh, a, a testament to the spirit of the Toledo community, I think, and people are just so grateful. I do think when we talked about the age of this officer. I mean, obviously there's a great piece of tragedy in this that they were planning a wedding and he has two small children. But I think obviously the sentiment would be there if this was an older veteran of the Toledo Police Department. And the chief talked a lot about um, the seriousness that they've encountered within the last year. 95 officers having contracted COVID. There were multiple um, police involved shootings over the last year. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot about the death of Officer Dia. Uh, another officer died um, around Thanksgiving, and it's just been a really, really tough year. So I think that kind of amplifies the need and the desire for the community to get out there and just say thank you. Absolutely. And another thing that we have mentioned, uh, we've talked about the pandemic. Uh, the, the effects that COVID is putting on all of this. Jeff Clegg, as we continued our conversation about the service out there at Toledo Memorial Park, saying typically we try to stay away uh, from the families as far as we can. They perform the service. Um, once the service is done, the family backs away, has been instructed to do that. So this is, he was kind of telling me how things are going to play out today as far as COVID is concerned and saying, and then we come in once everybody is clear, people feel comfortable and they finish everything that needs to be completed. But he said it's it's hard right now. And I asked him about the the loss of the intimacy of, of being there for the families because everybody realizes that, oh, oh goodness, we, we need to mask up. We need to keep our distance. And, and he says they are mindful of that going through this process today. And let's talk a little bit more about what the public can take away from this because I also think that the community is grieving here and I think the community wants to be comforted in knowing that they've given uh, support to this officer and his family and we did talk with the vice president Jason Pappas of the Fraternal Order of Police just to give us some perspective about this funeral and what the public can take away from a day like this. I think what what the community uh, provides to the officers along the parade route, uh, through the prayers, through the condolences, through the police department, you know, website, uh, through the community, the the newspaper or the signs that they roll through uh, as the officers are coming by, um, the charitable events that will be put you know put forward by the community. I think all of those are are really important for the officers as they're passing by, knowing that the community can't be part of the funeral because of the way that the situation is. Um, and in the same respect, I think as the uh, community needs to know, and I think they do understand this already, uh, especially with two and six months, that those officers are willing to give their entire being, including their lives, to defend and support the community uh, of Toledo. And so I think those two things kind of go hand in hand and I don't think they're lost on each other. I think the officers will look back at this time uh, of both Officer Diaz's funeral and of this funeral and know that the community was there to support them. And I know the community knows that the police officers there to support them as well. And there is a show of support right there. The thin blue line flag, which supports um, 
police officers and is often waved in a time like this. And I've noticed as I've driven around town too, a lot of people have had blue lights turned on on their porches. I've seen these flags on homes uh, over the past week or so. Yeah, I want to go to something. I don't know if you were with the morning show early, early this morning. I had a little puppy who decided I was going to be up at 4.55 this morning, but I joined our morning team and Zania was talking. She has got a brother who is in law enforcement and she was talking about, and, and, and Ke, uh, uh, Jason P Pappas just spoke about it, that show of support and what that means to officers when they are driving down this processional route, seeing people out there, knowing that, you know, these community members, hopefully they're saying, I got your six, right? We, we support you. We are in we are in support. We are in unison with you, Toledo Police. Thank you so much for what you do every single day. And now we can see that the funeral procession has officially started. It is making its way from the University of Toledo Savage Arena. It will travel down Douglas Road to Monroe Street there in Sylvania, where they will enter Toledo Memorial Park. There will be a service. And we also talked uh, this week with Jerry Mazur. He is the drum major of the Toledo Firefighter Pipes and Drums. Uh, bagpipes, a very long tradition with uh, the Toledo Police Department, really any police department and fire services. Um, it is also significant to say that seven years ago today, Toledo lost two firefighters in an arson, Jamie Dickman and Steve Machinsky. But this is what, this is part of the service we will not see today. And this is the bagpipes and they honor the fallen. They send them off in the proper way. Uh, Jerry tells us, um, and he gives a, kind of a history. These bagpipes were used um, in Scotland, in Ireland, back in, in history, and were used as a symbol in war when you march in and out to honor the fallen. And now it's become, since 9-11, he says, a tradition within police departments and fire departments. So what will happen today is once the funeral procession pulls into Toledo Memorial Park, uh, again, media will not be there, but the family will see and these police officers will see the bagpipes being played as Officer Stalker is led from the hearse to the grave site. There will be the 21 gun salute. Mm -hmm. uh, they will play taps and they'll also play Amazing Grace on the bagpipes as the flag on his casket is folded and presented to the family. More of these ceremonial steps that, you know, we've talked and we've learned as far as that moment getting the family, the friends, uh, so much closer to closure of this day. Um, Melissa, you and I spoke early this morning. We were talking about this processional route and what's along that route. And I mentioned a school, a specific school, Christ the King, which Carla Byron is outside of Christ the King there on Harvest Lane near Monroe Street, where Carla, I understand this might be a moment for those students to kind of take in and understand a little bit about their safety forces. Yes, uh, Jeff, this is an opportunity for these uh, middle school students out here. It's about 90 kids. I'm going to step out of the way so you can uh, see behind me um, about 90 middle school uh, students here. So sixth, seventh and uh, eighth grade. They have the opportunity to uh, see a, uh, a send off for a hero here in the Toledo community. They didn't have this opportunity in the summer because a uh, school was out. Um, so when and uh, Officer uh, Dia, uh, during his funeral and his procession, the kids um, weren't uh, out here for that. Um, although, of course, uh, maybe some of their parents or members of the community were out here for the procession. But this is a, um, a school, uh, or they're taking a break from their school activity to do this, which is uh, rather special. And um, the principal uh, said that he wanted these students to uh, see um, how uh, Officer uh, Stalker, um, how, how they can show their support for Officer Stalker. And um, you can't uh, see at the moment, but um, these students are holding an American flag in their hands um, just so that they can wave them as the um, hearse and all of the uh, law enforcement vehicles uh, drive on by. So this will be a very uh, special moment for them. I do hope to um, talk with one of the students out here so um, we can share uh, his thoughts and his um, feelings on, on what's going on and what he will be seeing today. Um, 
but but yeah, and you can hear uh, cars as they're passing by um, honking. Sorry, I just wanted that um, truck to to go by. Um, but yeah, these uh, vehicles, they are honking at, at these students. So the uh, people, the community members who are driving by are also showing their support for these uh, students who are standing out here as well. Uh, so we will uh, continue to, be, or the students will continue to be out here until uh, the uh, procession comes by along the route as uh, they make their way to Toledo uh, Memorial uh, uh, uh. Park. And uh, now you can see it looks like law enforcement is starting to block off Monroe Street here. All right, guys, I'm going to toss it back to you. Carla Byron, thank you so much. A really important lesson for these young kids. And I think a day that they'll always remember uh, being out there in yeah. front of their school and saluting uh, this fallen hero. You look for those teaching moments throughout uh, the course of a classroom, uh, classroom year schedule, and this is one of them. Yeah, no better lesson here. Let's get to Ariel Onset now, who is uh, seeing right now as Officer Stalker is ready to begin that processional toward Toledo Memorial Park. Ariel. Melissa, the hearse has just passed us, and as you can see, the processional has just begun here for Officer Brandon Stalker. We start off, of course, with Toledo police cruisers, as well as cars from Officer Stalker's friends and family uh, mixed in along with that in the processional. Once all of the Toledo police cruisers have passed us, then all of the other vehicles you see standing by at attention, Dayton Police, City of Guard, Elite Area, Avon Lake, Johnston, all of these other cars will then fall in behind the Toledo Police Department and Officer Stalker's friends and family. You know, I see different people at attention throughout the way along this route, be it City of Toledo workers or others here at the University of Toledo. Right now, the procession is just in its initial stages. As I said, the hearse has passed us, beginning its way towards Toledo Memorial Park. Park, where Officer Brandon Stalker's friends and family will lay him to rest. One of the most beautiful and, of course, touching moments of his memorial services were just the songs and the way that others described him. You know, I was speaking with a police officer here from another department asking him what really touched him the most about the ceremony. He said they lost an officer in 2010. They came today to show their support. And one of the biggest things that struck him was the music and the way they were able to bring Officer Stalker to life through what he loved. He loved his family. He loved his police department. He loved being a brother to his colleagues in blue. And of course, you heard from Noah Zimmerman, who really talked about what it meant to be like a little brother to Officer Brandon Stalker, showing that support and really saying, hey, I'm not going to just talk about this with you. I'm going the extra mile with you. What do you need? I will help you get there. And now we see so many others beginning to make that journey as well. Let me take this moment with you. Let me journey with you on this procession to lay you to rest. Let me be with you. Let me be with your family as they mourn your loss. And of course, as we ended that ceremony, I've got your six. We'll take it from here. We see all of these police cars from other departments from the Toledo Police Department and of course officer stalkers friends and family saying we've got it from here Jeff Melissa this is just the beginning of what we're about to see and I really like what Ariel touched on too that's what I was getting ready to say is so much of this is police tradition but we've heard so much and I think that's what's I think the best part, if you can say it that way, about a funeral is that you learn so much more about who the person was, not just the police officer, from uh, the people at the church, uh, from the songs that were chosen, from the beliefs of the family, from the childhood friends, and now his partner at the Toledo Police Department as well. Well, absolutely, and those in attendance who... Uh, Mayor Wade Capsicavage talking about his understanding of who this person was, and he has learned mm -hmm. more about this young man, and uh, Chief Crawl even knowing more about this young man, I'm sure. Um, I mean, our boss doesn't know every single nook and cranny of our 
our lives, but you get, as you spend more and more time and understanding this person in days like today, like you said, starting to open up uh, who this officer was, what he was about, what he meant to the Washington local schools community, Monac Elementary. Mm -hmm. we, we talked about that earlier, how he went back and talked to those young people in the classrooms about being a police officer and how important it was to him. And he loved being a Toledo police officer and he had a really great uh, relationship with his former partner, Mitch Vanderhorst, who talked with Jerry Anderson on Leading Edge this past weekend. And he really talks about more of the personal side of Officer Stalker. just one of the most genuine people that you're ever going to know. Um, he was a brother and just an absolute joy to be around. Um, and that's the kind of person he was outside of work and at work. Um, I, I know we helped a lot of people and I just don't want people to forget that he was the man that everybody should strive to be. Once again, part of Leading Edge, uh, that interview that happened uh, at about 8.30 in the morning this past Sunday, talking with, once again, Brandon Stalker's partner. Starting to see more and more people show up outside the cemetery. And I think this goes perfectly into who Emma Henderson has found out there on Monroe Street, awaiting the processional at Toledo Memorial Park. Emma Henderson, you're talking with someone who had that same dream uh, that belonged to Officer Stalker. That same call, right? That's right. I actually just spoke to a current police cadet over at Owens Community College. Um, he says that it was very important for him to be here. He has now been working for a decade in the police academy, and he hopes to one day be a Toledo police officer. Uh, he says he works a full time job 40 hours a week, but his drive to be in law enforcement um, is still there. He wants to be that member of the community that supports people and that helps people. And so I asked him, he's seen two officers die in the line of duty in the past six months here. What still inspires you? And he says, Officer Anthony Dia and Officer Brandon Stalker, they're the ones who inspire him. He sees those type of examples in our community and he sees what they've done and how they're remembered and how they serve and says that makes him want to serve even more, even knowing what the risk is, even standing here right across the street from the cemetery as we're saying our final goodbyes to a police officer. He says these are the men who inspire him to want to do the same thing in our community. Emma Henderson reporting there live in Sylvania. She is just to give you an idea of where she is located just on the sidewalk. That is just to the north of the Kroger store right there to the entrance to Toledo Memorial Park. And I think it's really interesting that who does Emma run into during a police officer funeral than a cadet who mm -hmm. still after seeing what Toledo's experienced with the death of two police, uh, police officers in the last six months, he still wants to run in into uh, this duty and this calling and with the risk that comes with this. And one of the things that the mayor said, he talked about a post that Officer Stalker had put on Facebook about fear. And what does that mean to you? To some people, it may stand for fear, everything and run, kind of an acronym. But to him, it meant face everything and rise. And I think that's what we're seeing in this young cadet as well. And who knows how many other people who are now called to service, to lay their lives down for complete strangers because of what we're seeing here with this young man. Absolutely. Uh, we also uh, have uh, more more uh, words that we had from uh, Toledo Police Chief George Crawl. We want to check in with him now more from the service. Once again, if you're just joining us, folks, we understand it is the top of the hour or a bit of a uh, Melissa. Let's reset a bit as as we uh, welcome in those of you who might be expecting uh, WTOL 11 at noon. We are uh, uh, bringing you continuing special coverage of a day to honor the life and the work of Officer Brandon Stalker, who was uh, responding to a situation uh, out on Fulton Street just uh, a little over a week ago and was part of the perimeter for what became a, an armed standoff with a suspect um, and simply doing his job at the wrong place at the wrong time and was shot and killed in the line of duty today. 
He is being taken from uh, Savage Arena where we spent some time this morning, about an hour, uh, listening to some of the words of encouragement and, and sharing on his life as tough as it was, hearing that final call as they take him to his final resting place at Toledo Memorial Park in Sylvania. And we've seen officers here in this processional from Elyria and Avon Lake. Those are communities near Cleveland. We've seen officers from Warren and Girard, Ohio, which is near Pennsylvania, coming from throughout the state. Uh, Toledo Memorial Park has told us uh, they could be expecting upwards of a thousand vehicles uh, during this processional today. And we do know that the hearse and the immediate family has left uh, Savage Arena at the University of Toledo uh, probably about 10 minutes or so. And they are making their way on Douglas Road to Monroe Street uh, West mm -hmm. to Sylvania. And we just saw live pictures there outside of Christ the King, which is uh, near the mall, Harvest Lane there. And those are those pictures. You can see some of the teachers outside and there are some students there getting ready to wave their American flags. And it is just a bright light on this very gloomy day to see so many people lined up to pay their respects to Officer Stalker and his family and his Toledo police family. Absolutely. And as we said, this is a teaching moment and Carla Byron is out there as well as a teaching moment for those students. And they, I believe she said the middle schoolers at Christ the King, which CK goes from uh, K through eight. Uh, and you've got the sixth, seventh and eighth graders out there who are learning a little bit more about the safety forces and, and kind of, it, it, I, I don't like using the word pomp and circumstance or the words pomp and circumstance, but that really, it has been used again and again by a number of the police, uh, police department officials that we've spoken to. This is ceremonial. This is a moment in time where they are doing this the way they do it. And we want to touch base right now with Kaylee Kirby, who is along the route as well. Uh, and Kaylee, we do see those flashing lights behind you. What are you seeing uh, where you are right now? Yeah, Melissa, just a few minutes ago, I saw the family of Officer Brandon Stalker along with his casket and the hearse uh, drive right by me. I got some really great video of that. It was also a very emotional moment just for me. I was I was at at the funeral coverage for Officer Dia and being close here as well. Um, just very emotional to see it come by, to see all of these officers and all of these lights right here behind me. I'm going to step out so you guys can just see what's going on. Uh, you know, officers are starting to pull away on the farthest side of um, where they're lined up. You can probably see them start to move. So they're making their way now that the family has started to make their lay, way along the procession route. And like I said, there are lots and lots of lights right here. So it's going to take some time for them to uh, file out and, and head on up over to um, Toledo Memorial Park where Officer Brandon Stalker will be laid to rest. But um, yeah, definitely very moving, very emotional being right here and seeing everything as it's happening um, right at the, at the front lines of it. It's definitely um, emotional and and sad, but um, all of these officers here are here to support him and, and support Officer Stalker's family. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. And folks, what you were seeing right there, first alert horizon in the air this morning, this afternoon rather, as we turn the noon hour, uh, right there along Monroe Street. And Melissa, I, I had to sit here and think for a second, okay, We've got some of the procession that has just started to come through. And folks, where you're looking right now, this is Monroe Street. We just passed Bolero Lanes right there at the 475 junction that takes traffic eastbound. And right now, First Alert Horizon is moving, probably hovering right around the Kroger parking lot right there by Value City Furniture, just to help you understand in West Toledo where we're talking about. But Melissa, as you look at this procession right here and think where Kaylee was just reporting that's all the way at UT those cars haven't even moved back mm -hmm. so to give you kind of the breadth of the response and the attendance today heading out to Toledo Memorial Park we are probably talking at least a mile a mile and a half long at this point because this stretches all the way down to Douglas hangs a right and then heads back to the University of Toledo. Yeah, and you can really see too in uh, the first alert horizon footage, you can see uh, people who are lined up there 
uh, outside Valero, you can see that they are saluting. Um, and one of the things we talked about were those kids outside of Christ the King and mm -hmm. how they may be looking at Officer Stalker as a hero. And there was one person who talked at the very beginning of the service uh, after Lieutenant Leonard read the poem called The Final Inspection. Um, it was Lance Corporal, Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman. He was a very close childhood friend who really seemed to look up to Officer Stalker. And he, he looked at him kind of as a big brother. And let's hear from him more about who Officer Stalker was as a person and as an inspiration right now. How much did Brandon care about my future? When I told Brandon I was gonna be joining the Marine Corps, it wasn't why, are you sure you wanna do this? It was how, how can I help you prepare for what's in front of you? Whether it was running with me in early in the mornings or working out, when I left for boot camp, I remember standing in the parking lot at MEPS, hugging him for the, and seeing him cry for the first time, saying, I'll see you soon, kid, followed by that big smile of his, which was followed by him traveling with my parents to Paris Island for my graduation, which was the first time he had ever told me how extremely proud he was of me. And I will hold on and cherish those words forever. You know, another thing he talked about, and, and, and you learn, as you said, you learn more about the relationships, the, the spirit. Um, he said, in hanging out with Brandon, Saturday was always for the boys. He said that, and that kind of stuck out. Uh, stuck out. He also talked about Brandon's love of Little Caesar's Pizza. <laughs> yeah, there was some humor uh, sprinkled in there, but I just thought, what a dedicated friend Brandon Stalker was. I mean, when when this young man, Noah Zimmerman, said to him, I'm going to join the Marines, he didn't just say, oh, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, he started running miles to prepare him for this boot camp. And then he went down to his graduation at Paris Island, and he shed tears over this moment for his friend. I mean, so this is a very strong relationship, and, and one that you can see Brandon Stalker as a coach and as a young police officer really taking people under his wing. And I think that's part of his legacy. And his pastor talked about that this morning. How do you want to be remembered? Mm -hmm. He did say that exactly. And you were looking just a bit ago, for, right now you're looking at the perspective of First Alert Horizon, showing you once again the stretch of Monroe Street. We are just east, folks, of Secor as the procession makes its way down and uh, it's touching once again you saw out in front of Bolero Lanes uh, a number of people gathered there but if you look folks all the way at the top of your screen you see the flashing lights that just made its way to where our Carla Byron is stationed and we have a camera on the ground as well we Carla you, we've started to see those flashing lights coming through there obviously right there by Christ the King School Yep, we are standing uh, just uh, right in front of Christ the King School and uh, Toledo Police uh, cruisers are making their way down right now. You can see some people standing on the side of the street um, a little further ways down. There's a lot of people with signs um, showing their respect. And here uh, we have the uh, hearse, Officer Stalker's hearse that is uh, passing by followed by more police cruisers. And um, as I was saying, there's a lot of uh, people down further who are standing, uh, community members with signs, paying their respects to uh, Officer Stalker, his family, and law enforcement in general. It really is great to see people standing out here despite uh, the dreary weather. Still, they are out here to uh, watch uh, the send off of of a hero. And uh, there are students from Christ the King who are standing out here as well. They are middle school students. Uh, their principal wanted them to take a break out of their uh, daily activities, uh, out of their schoolwork to uh, take the time to see this uh, procession as it is going by. They are holding uh, American flags. They have their hands over their hearts. 
and uh, this is something that they didn't get to see last year with Officer Diaz's uh, funeral because uh, they weren't in school. It was the summer, so they were out. Um, so this is just a great opportunity for them to, to pay their respects to a hero. Carla, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. So Melissa, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, Carla, just standing kind of close to them, any words that you're hearing, what they're thinking, what they were saying on the way out, any instructions their teachers were giving them? I haven't spoken with any of the students yet. I am hoping to uh, get a chance to talk with one um, after uh, the, this pr procession goes through. I wanted to give them a chance to, to see it. Um, but what uh, I, I said, they are holding American flags and they have their hands over their hearts. And, and mm -hmm. right now they're just silent. Um, they, they're just watching um, as, as all the vehicles are, are going through. Carla Byron reporting live for us along the processional route there on Monroe Street. You do still have time. Melissa, if you, look at that. Right little, there across. Little child little. In, in his car. Mm -hmm. As so much of this being taught to these kids is via parents or teachers today. And hopefully even these kids at Christ the King or, or if there are other children out there today can have that important conversation with their parents tonight about, as we've seen with Max, who ran the cocoa stand over the weekend and raised $13,000 for the Stalker family, or whether it was the boy in Florida who is running miles for fallen officers, about the sacrifice of these young men and women. And speaking of that, uh, Lieutenant Kelly Leonard, you may be familiar with her throughout uh, various news coverage. She is the public information officer for the Toledo Police Department. And unfortunately, part of her job has been um, over the last six months, really playing a large role in funerals of Officer Dia and today Officer Stalker. But also I think um, she probably takes great honor in have, having shared this poem that we're about to hear right now. And it really talks about um, when a police officer, as Officer Stalker believed, goes to heaven's gates and what he encounters having given the ultimate sacrifice. The policeman stood and faced his God, which must always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shining just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, policeman. How shall I deal with you? Have you always turned the other cheek? To my church, have you been true? The policeman squared his shoulders and said, No, Lord, I guess I ain't because those of us who carry badges can't always be a saint. I've had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was rough. And sometimes I've had to be violent because the streets are awfully tough. But I never took a penny, Lord, that wasn't mine to keep, though I worked a lot of overtime when the bills just got too steep. And I never passed a cry for help, though at times I shook with fear. And sometimes, God forgive me, I've wept unmanly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here. They never wanted me around except to calm their fear. If you've a place for me here, Lord, it needn't be so grand. I never expected or had too much. But if you don't, I'll understand. There was a silence all around the throne where the saints had often trod, as the policeman waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, policeman. You've borne your burdens well. Come walk a beat on Heaven Street, because you've done your time in hell. And that poem, if you'd like to uh, research it, I wanted to get a closer look at the actual words because I thought it was so moving. It's called The Final Inspection. And uh, you saw Officer Stalker's mother there uh, weeping, listening to that poem as well today. Mm -hmm. As we continue to look down Monroe Street, uh, the left of your screen, all the way to the right, filled with cars. Melissa, as we were listening to Kelly there, Lieutenant uh, Lenhart read that poem, uh, we did here in the studio see another shot back at UT, and there is still a line of cars that has not moved yet. 
uh, just to give you an idea. If you think, folks, all the time you've run out, for, run out to Franklin Park Mall, you've gone to lunch, you, you've gone maybe to the, uh, I don't want to name drop Dunkin' Donut, but I just did, <laughs> but right there at Douglas and um, near Douglas and Monroe. But uh, as you make your way through there, you know the length of this stretch, and there you see some of the cars, still a parking lot situation. They are waiting for their turn just to get moving here. And, you know, we talked to Jeff Clegg with Toledo Memorial Park, and he said they were prepared and uh, surprised at the same time when they had a 1,000 cars in that facility for Officer Dia. Uh, we could be looking at more today. And if you thought COVID or now as we see large snowflakes would lessen the amount of people turning out and safety forces turning out, uh, you may have been wrong today. And people are turning out on social media as well. Our Amanda Faye has been keeping track of uh, some of the sentiments that have been coming in as police and uh, also the public have been watching our coverage throughout this morning, very emotional at times. And Amanda, what are people saying uh, to you there on social media this morning? Well, Melissa, I guess it's really no surprise, as you said, the, the people who have come out in this kind of weather uh, to show their support, it's really no surprise that we have received hundreds upon hundreds of condolences that have been rolling into our newsroom throughout the day, some of them from total strangers, others actually sharing some personal memories, and I want to share a couple of those with you. Kathy Boland Seifert says, Brandon, you are a true hero, your infectious smile, your caring attitude, your desire to make Toledo and Ohio a better place, your need to keep everyone one safe and then she gets personal here. She says thank you so much for steering Dylan down a safer path for teaching others how to be just a little better than they were rest in heaven. And when you see Mike Collins and you will tell him I said hi. She goes on to say my prayers to your family and friends and uh, and your family in blue as well as they continue through this difficult journey. May their wonderful memories carry them through. And I one more to share with you this from Grace Hasty to TPD. We cannot thank you enough for what you do to protect our communities. Only the bravest sign up for this duty. Rest in peace to your brother, Officer Stalker. To Brandon's parents, losing your child is something unimaginable and the pain is indescribable. My deepest condolences to you. You raised a hero. Prayers being said for his fiance, his children, his friends, and his loved ones. It's going to be a very hard day. We support you. And you can share your condolences right now on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Just use the hashtag Officer Stalker. And we're going to share these messages with the Toledo Police Department as well. Jeff, Melissa, just some, some really great words coming in from our community so far today. Absolutely, and you're doing very important work there, Amanda, and gathering those because a lot of the people maybe cannot be uh, the community lining this route, which we've seen this, the snow come just pouring down right now uh, very heavily as this procession makes its way along um, in Rose Street on the way to Toledo Memorial Park right now. It's, it's beautiful in the response. The snow just adding to that at this point as we see these cars start to line up uh, here on Monroe Street. And we are positioned all up and down this stretch, folks. We uh, also saw a, a gathering outside of the Kroger at the corner of Haroon and Monroe Street. Our Emma Henderson reporting earlier uh, some of the folks who were already draped in blankets getting ready to show their support as that procession starts to make its way through there. And as you see right there, that is the entrance to Toledo Mor Memorial Park there in Sylvania, the second largest cemetery in the state of Ohio, getting ready to be the final place, uh, the final resting spot for Officer Brandon Stalker here in just a little bit. And one of the important traditions we want to revisit too is oh, this is a, a private portion of the funeral service with full military honors once we uh, pull into Toledo Memorial Park. Uh, but the Toledo firefighter pipes and drums will be playing there uh, during this private portion of the funeral service for Officer Stalker. And, and we've mentioned, and if, if this is the, your first time joining us today, as we see the last bit of the procession finally begin to leave the University of Toledo, the Toledo Fire Department and the city of Toledo is also mourning today two fallen firefighters who were killed seven years ago today, Jamie Dickman and Steve Machinsky. But this is what the Toledo firefighter pipes and drums tell us is part of what they do. They show up to honor the fallen and send them off in the appropriate way and keep them 
in our memory. And um, what will happen here is as the hearse makes its way to the actual grave site, and here are those two uh, fallen to, uh, Toledo firefighters, Jamie Dickman and Steve Machinsky, who were killed in an arson seven years ago today. I had a similar style uh, funerals where community members lined up for them. Um, what will happen is once Officer Stalker um, makes his way to his grave site, you'll, the bagpipes will be playing. And again, this is part of the private service. They will have the full 21 gun salute, taps will be played, and then the bagpipes will also play Amazing Grace. This is very traditional. This is very ceremonial uh, for this type of full honor funeral in which a person has died in service. Um, and the American flag will be folded uh, during Amazing Grace, played on the bagpipes, and be presented to Officer Stalker's family. Melissa, well, I don't know if you were able to see it just there, but it was a moment that struck me, and it was happening just across uh, Haroon and Monroe as folks are lined up there, ready to pay their respects. And that's exactly what they did. They stood at attention. I don't know if we can see that again to see whether the first parts of this procession are starting to get a little bit closer to the entrance of Toledo Memorial Park. But that was one thing that struck me was the fact that people knew, oh, this is the moment. This is the moment. I need to stand up and show my respect, pay reverence to what's about to happen because this is why we're here. And again, uh, this is Valero Lanes there on the left. And uh, there are people standing here in these live pictures right now. You can see one gentleman uh, holding the American flag. Another is just, you know, they're both silent. And you can see a group uh, on the other side of the street at Valero as the processional makes its way very slowly down in Rose Street. The beginning should be arriving at Toledo Memorial Park uh, just momentarily, but again, we've just seen the last bit leaving the University of Toledo. And the chief is in all of our hearts and minds today as well. And I think over the past eight days, we've heard from him several times I think he considers himself very much a father figure to his Toledo Police Department. He takes it extremely personally when um, one of them is hurt or in this case killed in the line of duty. This is a, not his first go around with this as chief. And I will say too, in, in some of the instances that he recounted the challenges at the Toledo Police Department, those officer involved shootings, he is out there to show exactly what happened how his officers responded. They follow the protocol. He said that's what happened in this case. He was out in front of the racial justice movement as well. He was. And, you know, this is a very difficult on the chief. He talked at the funeral today and he said um, he had prayed that we would never be here again. Uh, his prayer was unanswered. And here's more about what he had to say about his officer, Brandon Stalker, as a person. I heard his coach mention how proud he was that he was serving. Toledo's residents coming to practice wearing his uniform to show the players. You can't teach that. That's an innate calling. He truly loved this job. Briefly speaking about Brandon and Whitmer, not only was he a grad and a coach, but his fiance and mom work for the district, and his little daughter is a student at Washington Local Schools. I know how tight knit Washington Local Schools parents teachers and students are, and I know that they are hurting. Rest assured, we are all praying for you. You mentioned the connection to Washington local schools, and we were, uh, we were so happy to hear from Superintendent Katie Anstat this week talking about Brandon's connection to not only Whitmer High School, but also he went to Monac Elementary. And she said, Melissa, and we shared this with folks earlier on, but if you're just joining us, Katie Anstat, Superintendent, says many of the staff know him since he was not there, uh, wasn't there all that long ago. She said, we are lucky to have officers who visit the buildings on their beat so our kids get to know them. Brandon was a member of our criminal justice program and came back and talked so proudly of his work at TPD. She said he leaves behind a gigantic hole in all of our hearts as his fiance and his mom work here, as the uh, chief just said, and his daughter attends here once again as Chief Crawl brought up. 
And we heard multiple people talk about how much Officer Stalker, how much Brandon loved baseball. He was a 2015 graduate of Whitmer. He did play baseball there for the Panthers. He played travel ball. He was even an assistant coach. And I thought this was remarkable as well. He coached, but then his shift changed at the Toledo Police Department and he had to leave coaching mm -hmm. to kind of follow his other passion, which was policing and uh, being in the service of uh, the Toledo Police Department and the city of Toledo. So many well wishes coming in today. Amanda Faye joining those, uh, joining us with those a little bit earlier, talking about all the uh, people that are going on social media. We invite you to do the same on Facebook, on Twitter. Use the hashtag Officer Stalker when you do so to share your uh, well wishes uh, for this um, hero that is gone way too soon, 24 years of age, um, and just on the department for just two years' time. This is the 32nd police officer killed in the line of duty for the Toledo Police Department. Uh, 23 of those 32 officers have been killed by gunfire in the history of the Toledo Police Department. There is one canine line of duty death that was Falco back in 2015. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot today about Officer Dia, Anthony Dia, who was killed back in July. Before that, it was, it's going to be 14 years in less than a month that mm -hmm. Officer Keith Dressel was killed in North Toledo in the line of duty. He had kind of intercepted a drug deal um, and he was killed, like I said, almost 14 years ago. But before that, it was 1970, mm -hmm. Officer William Miscannon. Um, so it, it has been uh, more frequent than, like I said, the, the chief was uh, regretting that he had to obviously do this again and hope that he never had to. Well, the other thing too, and Melissa, we've, we've kind of not touched on it today, but the other thing that this has taught us this week and hopefully 2021, and, and we've heard people say this, that this year is a call to action uh, as far as what we have seen and the officers asking for more protections and the chief, we're talking shields, things of that nature. And the chief has said that they will look into that. The mayor has said they will look into that, but it also opens up the avenue of mental health services because 20, the other, the other person lost in this was a 27 year old by the name of Christopher Harris, the one who shot those fatal shots and was then killed by police and returned fire of that armed standoff. But hoping that this is a call to action as far as mental health services are concerned around Northwest Ohio as well. Yeah, obviously the chief and the mayor expressed uh, anger about some of the shortfalls in the legal system. A some, lot of the, of, some of the most emotional moments from them as well. Yeah, absolutely. And you could hear the anger in their voices. And I think as community members or media watching this, the question is how can a person whose family says is mentally ill possess legally obtained guns? And so this is reigniting the mental health conversation um, and the gun conversation. And, and the mayor said at the time, uh, eight days ago, it's been since Officer Stalker was killed in the line of duty, the mayor said, we need to redouble our efforts at the state level or federally to make sure our officers can know when they encounter a situation. If there's someone with documented mental illness who's been through the system, I want our officers to know that he does not want HIPAA regulation standing in the way. And then we also contacted Paula Hicks Hudson, who is a former Toledo mayor herself. She is now representing District 44. And also Michael Sheehy, who represents District 46, both talked about these common sense gun safety measures, which they believe mm -hmm. most people want to see. Um, and that is addressing the access to deadly weapons by people who should not have them in their possession to begin with. Now, we don't know if this young man who you're seeing right there, he is with uh, his guardian, his adult guardian there standing, standing watch. looks like he has his hand over his heart. He does, showing his uh, ultimate respect. Who knows, this young man may end up being uh, the next uh, <laughs> Toledo police officer here in a few years' time. But out there in front of uh, Christ the King, not too far from Harvest Lane on Monroe Street. We are starting to see Melissa the procession enter Toledo Memorial Park. Our Emma Henderson is standing by live there. Emma, tell us what you're seeing right now. 
That's right. Um, I'm going to be a little bit quiet because there are a lot of people here trying to pay their respects. There are quite a few officers who are just starting to drive by. We can now see the procession. I think the initial officers who um, are stopping here to really help organize things just pulled over. And then as you can see right here, I believe this is the very beginning of what, as we've seen, is going to be a very long and impressive procession in honor of officer Brandon Stalker. Now I do want to mention I just spoke to I just spoke to Max Tickmeyer, the kid who raised $13,000 this weekend from his hot cocoa stand. He is out here standing in front of the cemetery as well today. He said that he wanted to be here to honor the officer in person. You see the hearse just drove by. I imagine these are the family members. So we're just going to be quiet, take a minute and let you see all of these officers at attention and all of the community members who came to pay their respects today. Emma Henderson, uh, remarkable that she caught up with little Max. Uh, he was camped out all weekend. We've seen so many um, instances of good in the community as a result of this. Um, people like Max, just eight years old, he sold hot cocoa over the weekend at a stand in front of his home in West Toledo. Uh, the Toledo police officer stopped by and the chief did. And the chief said he had a great morning at Max's hot cocoa stand. He's an amazing young man. And as Emma mentioned, $13,000 donated to the stalker family over the weekend and when i saw max on the news i had to say wow thanks to his mom mm -hmm. i mean she was there teaching him about the respect that we should pay to toledo police officers and it's not his first go around he did this six months ago as well and i also want to point out too uh, there is a local woodworker his name is rob moore a lifelong toledoan Again, second time he's done this, but he created a memorial bench uh, for Officer Stalker. He said, you know, this really broke my heart. Another young kid killed. And he says, I have children older than this officer. It was so sad to see he's starting a family. The Toledo Police Department is so important to me and I give back as much as I can. He cuts every piece of these benches by hand, sands them down. It's a hobby he's turned into a business after the pandemic actually eliminated his job. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've just been so touched by seeing all of this um, community support. And we're seeing it right now. Absolutely. And we want to check in one more time with Kaylee Kirby out at UT Savage Arena uh, outside there as the procession has uh, made its final jog to uh, the final resting place for Officer Stalker. Yeah, Jeff, the scene here is definitely uh, quite drastic to what we saw 20, 30 minutes ago. Uh, at that time, there were lights lined all along Douglas Road. There were the the hearse coming by me. Uh, now all of that is gone. The parking lot, as you've mentioned multiple times, has entirely cleared out as that procession has made its way to Toledo Memorial Park. So definitely a different scene here. Um, you know, not not having any more cars, not not even seeing lights or hearing people talking. Uh, it's definitely changed as they've made their way to Toledo Mo Memorial Park to lay Officer Brandon Stalker to rest. Kaylee, I just as as we let you go for a final time here today, I just I wanted to go back out to her real quick. Can you can you kind of sum up for us the emotion of today? Have you had a chance to just kind of pause, take it in and, and what you experienced out there? Yeah, Jeff, it's definitely been uh, very emotional, very quiet on my end. Uh, you know, seeing these officers and Toledo police, Toledo fire, everyone from all over Ohio and Michigan make their way here. Uh, very somber, but, you know, a lot of them nodded their heads, said thank you, um, and were, you know, happy to be paying their respects. Uh, I did talk to a few officers who said that, you know, it was their duty to come down here and to support their brother in blue, uh, despite what happened, that this is what police officers do. And so uh, for me, it was emotional because I'm right here and I'm right at, at the ground of all of it. And so um, before my life hit, before I actually had started tearing up, I'm just talking about seeing the hearse come by and things like that. So. We feel you. Oh, we it, feel you. And, and the community absolutely. feels what you're feeling as well. And listen, it is it is easy to 
empathize mm -hmm. with this family and these police officers. And, you know, part of this processional, part of these services, as you can see, um, just someone being comforted there. I mean, this, this is kind of closure for us all. It's healing for the family that the community comes out. And how can you not be grateful to this young man and all of these officers who are called to put their lives on the line every single day? I don't know that we can all say that we could do what they do. Melissa, we have had so many moments over the last year to put ourselves, to empathize, to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, understanding the loss that they have felt with COVID, understanding that these families in the Toledo Police Department, uh, we heard it through the poems, we heard it through the songs, that they don't know. Every night they go to work. One, some of our best friends, they are in law enforcement, and we talk to them. They understand the thin blue line, the, the support, the reverence for these jobs that they go to each and every day and the respect that they have. We also have our Carla Byron out there along Monroe Street. Carla, uh, as, we, as we, I guess, closed down for the day and, and this celebration that will be private once they get into the cemetery. Uh, your final thoughts on, on what you've seen, the respect that you've seen out of the students, out of the teachers there at Christ the King School. Yeah, and, and uh, also the respect from all of the law enforcement vehicles that are just passing by right now. I mean, I've seen police cruiser after police cruiser from uh, across Ohio, across Michigan, some uh, agencies I don't even uh, recognize. Uh, but back to your point, Jeff, um, the students uh, from Christ the King, the, the middle schoolers is about 90 uh, kids who are standing out here right now with uh, an American flag. If uh, if you can um, show show them uh, right now, they are holding an American flag with their hands over their hearts. Um, they, I've been watching them just as the police cruisers have been going by. They've just been uh, quiet, just taking taking this all in. And I believe some of them now, they've been uh, standing out here for about an hour. They're starting to move them uh, back in. But I know that this was a very touching moment for them. And um, I am hoping to speak with one of the students uh, who has been standing out here just to get his thoughts and his perspective on, um, on, on this day. And um, it's, it's really been incredible to see that despite the weather, people have taken the time out of their day to pay their respects to a hero. And this is what a hero's send off looks like. And um, I hope that um, this has been impactful for, for these students um, at Christ the King today. Carla well, Byron reporting live. And you know, I think it's, it's a lesson not only in community and what community yeah. means and, and being part of a community, but also your civic duty and responsibility. I mean, so many lessons all wrapped up in one for any children out there today. Well, I was also going to say, and not to be flip, but those children there, having gone to Christ the King, I know the reverence that we are taught each Thursday at Mass that we need to be respectful. So those, those kids know uh, know the role, definitely. And also, we cannot forget all of the condolences that have been coming in online. If you've been following along this morning with our coverage, uh, the hashtag we're using is hashtag officer stalker. Our Amanda Fay has been gathering all of those sentiments that have been coming in throughout the morning. Amanda, you found people who are strangers, other people who knew officer stalker personally. Yeah, absolutely, Melissa. It's been actually very challenging kind of picking uh, from the hundreds and hundreds that have come in. A lot of people, you know, just expressing their condolences, uh, sending their prayers and their thoughts. And here's a, a couple more that I do want to share with you um, before we leave today. Donald R. Lockhart says, our community has lost a young man at the beginning of his life, a life that he had chosen to serve and protect our community. Heidi Winnegar writes, I worked with him a few years ago when he was 19, 20 years old. We shared a lot of laughs and I'm heartbroken. What a wonderful young man, father and fiance. He was so helpful, kind, mature and patient. He will be deeply missed. And Chelsea Hammer says to become a law enforcement officer takes bravery and selflessness to a level undeniably great. Officer Stalker will be remembered as a hero. Thank you for your ultimate sacrifice. I send prayers and so many wishes of comfort and peace to his family and friends during this difficult time. So again, these are just some of the condolences and messages that you have sent us so far through.
throughout the day. There have been hundreds of them, and we thank you for sharing those with us today. And you can continue to do so on our Facebook and Twitter pages by using that hashtag Officer Stalker. You could see some of them here scrolling at the bottom of your screen as well, and we do want to pass those along with the Toledo Police Department. I'm sure they will appreciate hearing your words today. Back to you guys. And boy, and, and, and I'm going to share another one, a, a name from the past that just popped up for me. Uh, he and I, he and his, his son and I went to school together and he is a uh, former Toledo police officer and he just wants to say thank you and thank you to the WTOL team for uh, the coverage of the funeral today because uh, there are, there are well, there are people who are watching for, they may not be out there physically today, mm -hmm. but they are paying their respects on the other side of the screen and that is why we are doing what we're doing and have been doing so since nine o'clock this morning. And that is one good thing about social media is that you can be here even when you're not here and you can share uh, those very important uh, messages for the family and the community. One of those messages came from the mayor whose job it is to lead the city in this time of sorrow and sadness through this ordeal and once again for him once again and be someone that uh, people can look to for comfort and he provided some of that comfort uh, this morning at the funeral. So let's hear right now from Toledo Mayor Wade Kapsikavich. I don't know why it is that it always seems that the best, the best among us are, are taken from us. I suppose there might be some truth to the, that old adage. I, 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 I suppose it might be the same reason that when we're walking through a garden, we always pick the most beautiful flowers. Maybe God wants to be surrounded by beauty and, and greatness too. I don't know. I do know though that while every man dies, not every man really lives. Brandon did though. Because to really live, to really live, you have to love. You have to have the capacity for love. What is life after all without love? And the mayor just giving some sentiment and the chief said as well, I, this is an unanswered prayer. I didn't want this to happen, but God has a plan. And I think we're all trying to make sense of why this happened and why officers stalker was taken on that day and I think that the mayor provided a more positive picture as to what happened here. Absolutely. Not easy to do, but he did mm -mm. such a nice job of it. We're going to check in once again with our Emma Henderson, who is out in Sylvania as the, the last parts of the procession start to make their way into Toledo Memorial. It's definitely an incredibly powerful scene here right now. It's really starting to, I think, hit everyone here, just the magnitude of what's happening. We saw the hearse already turn into the cemetery. We saw the SWAT vehicles turn into the cemetery. As we know, many of those SWAT officers were likely on scene with Officer Stalker during his end of watch. Um, it's really silent out here, except for the occasional lights and sirens that are coming from the procession. I'm gonna get out of the way so you can see that. It's been going on for several minutes. You're seeing police departments. There's Pemberville. There's Parma. You're seeing these police departments from all over. And it seems like an endless stream of support and love, these lights and sirens, all of these officers coming in to pay their final respects to someone who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And like we said, this has been going on for several minutes and we still cannot even see the end of the procession in sight. It's an incredibly, incredibly powerful moment for everyone who's standing here. And uh, you can really see it. it's starting to take its toll on the crowd. People are starting to really realize what this moment means. This is the end. We are starting to say goodbye. And um, as they all turn into the cemetery, that's really what this signifies. This is the final goodbye, uh, Jeff and Mel. Emma Henderson reporting live for us there as, as, as we said, the, the rest of the procession getting in there and the rest of the service is part of a private ceremony that will take place in there for uh, Brandon Stalker. 
And we, again, learned so much about Officer Stalker from his family today and really the people who spoke on behalf of his fiance, Ashley, and particularly his mother, Cosette, their pastor there at the North Point Church of his mom said, a parent should never imagine bearing a child. He will always be with me in my thoughts, memory, heart, and through my grandchildren. And Cosette Stalker promised her grandchildren and Ashley, uh, Officer Stalker's fiance, I will be there with them until the day that she dies. Yeah. And so I think that's her pledge there to kind of take over as the police department has said they will take over caring for this family. And you see so many of them out there right now in the snowy conditions. Uh, Toledo police officers who are paying their respects to one of their own today. Even Lieutenant Lenhart said at one point, we're going to be supporting you 500 strong. She may have said 540 strong, whatever number she put out there. But just the fact that the Toledo Police Department is there for you, I think that goes in hand in hand with Toledo Fire and Rescue as well. And you talked about Cosette, the mother, um, even Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman um, getting up there, the friend, the almost brother, uh, calling her the rock of the family and, and how important Brandon was in her life. And I know we've reflected on this throughout this week, and I wonder if people are reflecting on that, on this throughout social media and, and who are on that parade route right now, that processional route, and that is, would you lay your life down for someone else? I think people inherently ask themselves that question when they see this young man's sacrifice. And one of the scriptures, um, this family um, obviously, uh, believes in God and Christ. And one of the passages that was read from the Bible today was of, by their pastor who read John 15, 13, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And he pointed out that Jesus said this to provide an example as to us as to what love really looks like. And that is to sacrifice for the life mm -hmm. of another. Again and again, we have heard about uh, Brandon Stalker's contagious smile. Uh, in fact, uh, Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman calling it a big contagious stalker smile uh, <laughs> during his words there on stage at Savage Arena earlier. Uh, his, his spirit, his personality, it was infectious. Um, you heard that from Chief George Crawl talking about this young man who had leadership in his bones, had leadership in his spirit, and those are things you don't have to teach, he said. His performance reports, always getting high marks, being called a solid, solid officer, and uh, just, just a show of the love, the passion that this young man had for his community, uh, the community in which he served, and uh, was even a better role model for the young people at Monac Elementary and for the children in his household. And his pastor said that Brandon was the kind of police officer we need today. And speaking of the support, you know, the chief has also been vocal on social media throughout the past week or so. And, and he says that he feels the support from you, um, from Toledoans, from people who've reached out to him from Michigan, all across the country. He's been getting phone calls and letters and it just really means a lot to the officers to know that while what happened was tragic, they have support out there. And we are uh, gathering messages to send to the, to, the, to the Toledo Police Department. They can feel it mm -hmm. out there along the procession route. And I think that's really important in helping uh, with this grieving process that they go through because they, they don't get to just separate this, Jeff. They have to go out right after this funeral service and they have to work the streets of Toledo yeah. while they carry this in their hearts. That's a great point. Uh, we, we also want to remind you there at home if, uh, and we've had tons of people, as Melissa said, reaching out to us on social media, but if you have the ability to donate and you find that you have a calling to donate to this young man's life, the Toledo Police Federal Credit Union has offered that opportunity to you. 100% of those donations go to family. There's also a GoFundMe account and memorial uh, clothing fundraisers. Uh, you can find links to all this information on our website, folks, at WTOL.com. And we, have, uh, we wanted to point out uh, those opportunities to you as well today because I know we've had questions about that. 
Melissa, and as we start to wrap up here too. Yeah, we are wrapping up and of course you can catch our coverage tonight at five o'clock, our full coverage, and you can continue sending your condolences and follow along with the WTOL 11 news app. We do want to just say thank you to the Toledo Police Department. Uh, this is the final call for Officer Brandon Stalker, but there have been 31 others in the history of the department. Yeah, and we want to also say thank you for spending some time with us here today. For all of us here at WTOL, we appreciate it. The final radio call for Officer Brandon Stalker. Attention on crews, McKenna Stalker has an important announcement to make. I love you, Dad, and I got you six times. Here's Chris. Dispatch to Unit 111. Dispatch to Unit 111. Officer Brandon Stalker on all call. Attention all units. Officer Brandon Stalker, ID 2789, has answered his last call. Officer Stalker was appointed to the Toledo Police Department on July 31st, 2018. He answered his final call on January 18, 2021. From the entire family at the Toledo Police Department, Officer Brandon Stalker, you and your family will remain in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. The air is clear.